You're listening to The Kick on longbox.fm. The Kick is for an adult audience. The Kick may contain certain material that may be unsuitable for sensitive ears. Listener discretion is advised. No. and discussion this is the kick oh the kick is back here monday night longbox.fm brought to you of course as always by riley's brewing thank you so much riley's and uh it's starting to become a good routine right digging it you know monday night you do a show wednesday night you do a show maybe some of us tuesday night you do a show then we go out see a show record a show air a show post a show all just shows all day long right and then we get paid what that either way no <laughs> what it's the eighth day of the week <laughs> i got paid in food recently i was happy well let's see and that's what i do i try to make all the hap- the, the people happy here uh this is of course the kick on long box and uh we we the show, if you first time you're hearing it or whatever, it's it's something a little more serious than you're used to hearing from us. Uh, this is uh, news, politics, things in the valley, just real talk, real discussion. Many, many different voices around the room, and we want to actually have good conversations, uh, something that you don't get to hear on normal media outlets or just people. Amen. <laughs> so yeah. that's what we're going for tonight and and every single Monday night here. Uh, you can participate and we now I put this out every week and I've been putting it out on the Facebook and when I was DJing before the show I was saying it. Uh, the challenge is out there just like we had no one who accepted the challenge to go see the Hillary movie. Uh, do call Skype anything. It's four nine two oh four five oh or on Longbox FM on the Skype or you can just chat in the YouTube chat room. Uh, get your thoughts in. And tonight I was thinking about because we don't really have a solid like this is our topic for tonight. We're just gonna talk. Um mm-hmm. I'm opening it up. Uh, any, we'll talk about anything. You call in. You got something to chat about. We'll do it. Mm. Uh, oh yeah. You can participate and get in on it. Uh, react to what we're saying, or just you know, if you want to talk about the new Grand Slam menu at Denny's, call someone sure. up. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll take it. So again, that number four nine two zero four five zero. You can uh, Skype Longbox FM, and Vanna is live tweeting as we go. That is of course on Twitter at Longbox FM. Uh, join, be a part of all of that. That being said, Kevin. Sir, take this away. Well, man, we've had we've had an exciting week on the DNC side, haven't we? <laughs> it's just Jeez, been sir. so much coming out of that convention. <laughs> yeah, circus indeed. Um, God, I don't even know where to start on this one. I haven't followed it too much. I do know that they have more or less rigged the entire arena to try to make it look like Hillary Clinton isn't a complete corrupt criminal liar murderer person. Uh, asterisk allegedly um, and I don't think they did a very good job because from what <laughs> I've heard uh, they've pretty much gotten booed off the stage from every single person that went up from the uh, Bernie Sanders supporters who didn't get into their seats because their chairs were sold to stand-ins on Craigslist to come in and fill these seats because they were afraid having too many people in one area would get uh, the boos to be heard which um, it failed because uh, the boos were heard. So, so they uh, they did their best to try to gerrymander the audience? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, it's probably a safe word to use. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't trigger anyone. Go ahead. If I may. Um, so I'll Introduce yourself. You're on the mic. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. I'm Alan Spencer. I'm Kevin's brother. And uh, I'm born and raised Fresno, but I live in Merced now. So um, I've, I'm still Valley. And I... I was uh, thinking, I don't really, I wonder if people realize how huge this election is. Like, it's not only the most important one, I would say, ever in the nation. This is probably one of the most important, you know, 
uh, presidential you know, or heads of state election, I would say, in the history of the world. Is coming it? Up. Oh, yeah. Is it? Because every year it seems to be this. Well, every year you get a new new person when someone turns out. Well, here's a few things. <laughs> remember, the last the la- eight years ago, it was Obama, and that was huge because it was a black man okay, running. But, well, yeah. on that reason alone, I mean, simply we could say the same because of Hillary being a woman. Mm-hmm. In your face. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. Well, here's a few things that, that we're dealing with now that we haven't had to deal with before. Uh, we have World War Three on the brink, and everyone's talking about it. Everyone knows about it. It's coming. <laughs> and we have an a, inevitable and impending global economic collapse that is coming, uh, geez, I want to say in days. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's the, I, really want, I really do think that, that it's going to be very, very soon, much sooner than we all want. Um, you also have Donald Trump, who has it, j- devastated the Republican Party and just completely eviscerated any chance of anyone up there because he just exposed all of the cancer in every single candidate, which it was so easy. All you had to do was just be have the balls to speak it you just had to just come out and just say it and then the the thing that the um you know the the what do they call it the establishment is not banking on or wasn't banking on or probably was never planning for was the immediate transfer of information yeah and with the beauty of the internet now being so much more I want to say organized than it was 10 years ago when you incorporate like Twitter and like Facebook and all that stuff that's happened. That's just, you know, at the time was a huge explosion, but now it's kind of an essential, you know, part of being on the internet. Uh, I mean, the, the establishment was not planning on all those emails just being dropped right there oh. before the DNC started and just watch it all crumble. It was so beautiful. I was going, hey, man. Because, uh. I mean, for, for me, when I look at all status and I just say, are you really that surprised are you that shocked that I mean, after everything that, that we've been talking about for decades are you that surprised that we just i mean were you that shocked that that pussy sanders wasn't gonna you know go down and kiss pillory's ass at the end everybody knew it everybody with any you know with any foresight knew that it's, was a, it's a death threat or it's and a death s- sentence otherwise yeah so you have one candidate that is destroyed the Republican Party, you have another candidate that has destroyed the Democratic Party. Everyone knows it's all bullshit. Everyone now. I mean, we're talking about the world. Like, everyone in the world knows is watching what's happening now. And you have, again, World War Three. Who the hell knows how that's going to end up? And what, you know, what's going to happen to the world then? I mean, economic collapse. You have about a two-week window margin, you know, when people are completely out of money and distri- distribution is stopped and everything is over. After a week, your neighbor's going to rob you to feed his family after two weeks your neighbor's going to kill you to feed his family and that's just the truth so that wasn't where i was going but yeah it's, it's a big deal <laughs> i mean that's where I, it all I think ends this up this election me... <laughs> is a really 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 big deal i think it's the most important one that we're probably going to see it's going to be like you know if i i would say bigger than so e- is there anyone the that gets elected here that prevents that that destruction oh, scenario well no i mean who, you know, who, libertarians who? are trying to tell everyone you put anyone then, up then there it's a disaster why, get, why is this that important then if it's if it's already a done deal well it's not important to me, but it's, I, I'm telling you, there's going to be some incredible changes in the world here in the next few weeks. Incredible. Unless we don't instate martial law first, and then no well, Obama just that extends his one stay of them. in office. <laughs> that's, so. that's the other option that still hasn't left the table. That count, that's, I would consider that an, an incredible you know, result. By the end of this year, if we have an instated martial law, I think after the year we've had, we've done something terribly fucking wrong. You want martial law? <laughs> no, no, I'm saying if yeah. it doesn't happen by the end of the year, then we've all contributed to something that we thought was going to go way left of center, and we probably thought that the fields were much greener. Yeah, I don't. I think people are still thinking left and right. It's going to be an absolute disaster. There will be no left, right. Every single thing will stop. The whole world will stop. <laughs> the entire central banking system has enslaved the entire world financially, and that financial machine is seizing like an engine that's been running without oil for the last 50 fucking years. That is definitely going to happen very soon. Yeah. It is going to be a really, really big deal. And Donald Trump, every time he opens his mouth, everyone on the Internet is trying to find out what he's referencing to. Right. And so all he has to say is 9-11, bam, everyone's looking up all that conspiracy shit and putting right. all those dots together. I'm right. telling you, information goes like that and the establishment is so fucking terrified of Donald Trump because the moment he speaks even if he speaks bullshit even if he speaks crazy shit everyone's looking into it oh, the yeah. thing about Trump if I've, I've picked up and I don't I don't condone voting whatsoever 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> voting. voting I don't is vote. A... To, I, I don't ask people if I can keep my own shit. Yeah, hang on. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this this oh, soapbox for a second. Sorry, sorry. Uh, voting voting is a violent act in in the fact that whatever the result of that vote is is being enforced by the state, mm. which is always done at the point of a gun. Hallelujah. Um, the state itself. I can. Oh, I'll get into that later. Um, Donald Trump. Everybody who hears his name either loves him and or absolutely hates him. Yeah. I don't know those that love him because there's not a whole lot of exposure on their side. There is a shit ton of exposure from the media and YouTube and all the likes about people that hate him. And I also know that the people that hate him cannot articulate a reason. Yeah. They can't. Well, he's still got John McCain in his corner, so that's that's whatever the case is. They they know what they've been told from everywhere else, but they have not done the research themselves whatsoever to 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 debate his policies, to discuss anything about outside his character, Mm. um, outside his his past, outside of his marriage, outside of you know what people have interpreted him to say. They can't quote the man to say anything actually racist and so forth. So the man Trump is not. He he is not uh, uh, on a leash to the kingmakers, in which case is the media. The media is, I mean, my God, it, it about as far left as you can swing nowadays um, outside of a very select small amount of few outlets that are still trying to push the different narrative. Mm. Um, but they are the ones that make and break entire entire careers, entire political careers are the ones that make and break presidencies. And they can't control Trump. Trump is not running mm. on big money he's not that's he's he's doing this on his own dime he can get up on that stage well did you see the stat the uh hillary clinton is from big business 45 million 48.5 million yeah and donald trump nineteen thousand. exactly exactly so this this guy is literally not that he's not paying he's paying (laughs) and he's paying from his own money quote unquote uh, he's donating to himself and repaying. He, he's got. He's not, he's going to get his money back somehow. Yeah, whatever for sure. That's but when you do. talk about the big business and who's fight or who's paying for whatever, this is where you see the pictures of her looking like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> that that's that forty eight point five million right there. Yeah. That's where it's kind of questionable yeah. who's donating and what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trump is the wrench in the gears of this machine that's been running for so Thousands long. Of years. And it's it's he is he's cracking. I, I hope. I hope. Either that or he's been in collusion from the get-go and they're playing the yeah. same con game they always have. Um, either way, the end result seems to be that the both political parties are crumbling yeah. at a rate they've never expected, which is – that's exciting. That is very it exciting. in weeks. Yeah. In yeah. weeks, the whole world is going to change. Yeah. The, the, the rate of information and the speed at which it spreads is exponential. And we've hit, we've hit that next cusp, yeah. you know, that next growth where we were at, you know, 16 and all of a sudden we're at 64. And it's fourfold, and and it's done at a rate that we weren't quite expecting. Nobody was, and and what what it's producing is pretty goddamn nice. But it's uh, it is it is pleasant to see that a lot of people are just looking in disgust and disbelief, and and the numbers of people that that can deny reality is dwindling. But and let me let me add to this and, and ask you kind of a question because I think that when everybody talks about you know the voting system here in America and this is one of the the topics we'll get into here in just a few because th- there's obviously with the Dean with the Democratic Party getting hacked I mean obviously there's this whole thing about the voting system and mm-hmm. can it be hacked and you know can it be compromised and I mean it's already happened it happened in Arizona back in July yeah, anyway so on and so forth. But the electoral call, the electoral college, man. And you think about the popular vote, and you say to yourself, "Well, the popular vote is just an exercise in busy work, right?" Ultimately, it is at its core, because no matter if you're a Republican living in California, if California votes Democrat, then that vote goes to the Democratic Party. It's popular vote for the electoral college, but it's still the electoral college because the electoral the electoral college the the those those particular delegates are bound either way. Does anyone know how that yeah, works? But it's still it's still no, majority rule. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if they're if you're a voting Democrat and you're bound, then I you can't can manipulate vote. the numbers a little bit, but it doesn't change the. Cancer. Oh, so we're talking about the 2000 election then? We're going no, back to Florida. No, I mean whatever. <laughs> Could anyone? <laughs> right. Every election is based on that electoral college majority. Uh, okay, hold on, real quick. One, majority rule. Uh, just because I'm curious, I started typing on Google. How does the and then it popped up third option electoral college work? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> seems to be popular right that's, now. That's Next page it. on Bo- yeah. Google just says no. <laughs> that's NSA right there. Right. And so the, I mean the the electoral college the 
Electoral College is just delegates from each state who uh, vote one way or the other. And in that state, they are basically bound, from what I know, to vote in for one party. And so but they if, don't have to. No, some, there are some states that have yeah. uh, percentages. But and what you're talking Vermont, about is Vermont and New Hampshire. Right? The conventions are saying we want you to vote for this guy. Pledge that you're going to do it. Well, yeah, look you know. what happened at the beginning of the RNC. Of I course. mean, the uh, entire same, fucking same meltdown. Same shit that happened at, I mean, yeah, at Ron Paul. Have you guys yeah. noticed that people just, you know, up there just fucking don't do what they say? <laughs> <laughs> like, have you guys just noticed that for a while? For all like, intents and purposes, I'll say that's the, the, uh, so far college. the observation of the yeah, night. Yeah. It's just, it's just another, <laughs> it's like a second stupid majority rule after the first majority yeah. stupid rule. So, I mean, all of it is illegitimate. But that's but, what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. who's to say that, like, look... You have 300 million people in this country and how many eligible voters at this point? Now, all those millions of votes, they go into the system. You mean eligible as in like they've registered? Or yeah, you mean yeah. registered, you eligible. The registered they're adults yet. registered in the system. They've, okay. you know, party affiliations. So I think on that's and so like, forth. what, 50 million What is that number? It's yeah. like 9% or 9 or it's 12%. Something, it, it's small. That much I know. I don't know the actual number. Oh, okay. um, but what, what I was getting at was all these people that vote for their particular candidate, right? That person. And all of a sudden you see that... Well, all right, now we've got 20 million, 20 million people who are voting this way, and then you got another 35 million who are voting this way, and it's like, well, can't we just skew the numbers a little bit? Who's to say that the vote is foolproof? And I, I really don't think it, that, that it is at this point, just based on manipulation standards. Yeah, but. No, of course it's manipulated. Yeah, I mean, this is, as, soon, as soon as they put in the electronic vote readers, there was corruption. That, so then that let, me ask, day. let me ask my, my, my case in point question. Does the popular vote really matter when it comes down to it? If the Fed says, hey, we're going to get this person into the office. Here's one thing I can guarantee you. It never matters what you vote. The people running the joint are going to do exactly what they want to do. <laughs> and they're going to just make it happen. This is true. So This is when I was a kid, Sunday night dinners at my house. So uh, mom, mom tells you, what do you want to do for the next week? Do you guys want to like, go to school or just hang out at home? You got it. All of us want to stay home and just do shit. And yeah, all of a sudden, nope, mom, you're going, you, to you're going tomorrow. to school tomorrow. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, Thanks true. for the vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most backhanded vote I've ever had. You got it. That's what it is. Well, thanks for tuning in tonight to the kick. We are we're done. Uh, realize you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it would help out. It would make things a lot faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this has been the 15 minute but, PSA. Okay. By the is kick. there anything? Is there anything to gain from here? Anything positive? Is or are we just doom and gloom and fuck it? Like. Bury, you might as well keep your head in the sand or well, bury it it's now. It's not doom and gloom if you know about it and you've prepared for it. But everyone else, I would say, yeah, it's doom and gloom. You're fucked, and I'll see you on the other side, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty um, much where it comes down. Yeah, it's it it is it's Get a prepared. scary scary thought for people to entertain that they might have to rely on themselves, and that's kind of where we're at here. This is why people shut down this kind of like mm-hmm. talk. This is why they don't want to hear it. Because they don't have anything to negate it, number one. And yeah. number, number two, it's horrifying to believe that any of it could be real. It is absolutely fucking terrifying to realize that your government does not have your best interest mm-hmm. in mind. And Especially when you have a record of about, what, 6,000 years of it happening over and over again? Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, it, it's <laughs> it's hard to tell somebody that there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, because it's a very, very tiny light, and it's a long fucking way. <laughs> Especially you when you realize there. that after you wait for that light to approach you, it's just an oncoming train either which way. Yep. So fuck it. <laughs> why, why even bother? Gotta get off the yeah. track. <laughs> However, that train's coming from somewhere, so wherever the hell that train entered from, that's where you're trying to get the hell out through. Right. So if you can avoid that massive train that's going to destroy 99% of everything in its path, <laughs> then, you know, if you if you were smart enough to duck... When somebody was screaming at everyone, you know, 10 miles down track, you might survive. Yeah. Uh, ducking in this instance is literally having water and food with you, um, having somewhere to go for at least six months. If you and, don't have uh, a gun, you're a dead man. Yeah, I'm scared. Gun, de- you this should is be scared. Scary. Gun. This is horrifying. This is, but the thing is, right this now, is a we burden can... of information that, that I've been carrying for a while. <laughs> but the future of your country is heading at you in the form of a speeding bullet train. Yep. No, no pun intended for the residents here in California. But you guys um, can buy Kevin's guide <laughs> to oh, survival on Longbox.fm. This is a great analogy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but the uh, but the fate of the fate of this country is coming at you in the form of a speeding bullet train, and literally yeah. the horn on the train is the squawking between Trump and Hillary, uh-huh. and yeah. it's just like that is like the biggest warning whistle ever. And it's like, get the ass. fuck it's out a of the way. Mixture of those three. No. Let, you're, let you're that just drive itself right. to the end of the tracks and beyond. Man. You know they can they can whoever's elected can help enact laws. They can do their um, what is it the, the the one where they just sign off and it's done. The uh, executive order. Executive orders, mm-hmm. uh, which you know they can't executive order kill all Jews. That's not going to get Martial passed. They're, that's not going to be allowed. Um, but it's still. Okay. It's so are like, those FEMA camps real yes. on the YouTube? Oh, yes. God, no. In the coffins. Uh, I've got tinfoil if you want to wear it. Mass graves are already ready. I, I'm pretty sure somebody didn't buy five hundred thousand of those things to make a quick clip for a joke. Someone said those had to come from somewhere. Somebody bought that many of them. Yeah, but maybe it was for something else that actually had some purpose that we don't know about. I hope so. And then some some quacks I mean, I videotapes it and it was like, here we go. DHS also bought a half a billion rounds of ammo or half a million. Only. A lot of zeros. Only. A lot of, yeah, that was like a year and a half ago. Uh-huh. They bought like, was it a half a billion? It was some ridiculous insane half a, number. So, uh, it was up in the millions, wasn't all, it? Uh, my, point. Math, my math is all way off. Is that a lot? It's, is it's, that a lot by today's standards? It's a lot of zeros. Okay. <laughs> it's a whole lot of zeros. So many deaths. Well, let really me there. let me go back Everybody. to what I was saying. It's yes, yes. Uh, It doesn't matter who's the president. I'm sorry. I, yeah. It all comes down to right. you, your community, your surroundings. And so all this doom and gloom I'm hearing, I don't, I'm don't. i not buying into it. Yes, shit's going to happen and has been happening and always will happen. Mm-hmm. It's what you do, and that's one of the things I want to do here is talk about things right. that, that, yes, we're talking the bigger picture with presidential because it's hard not to, but what can you do here in the Valley, in your in your surrounding community? Well, and all in that the stuff? very near future, you're going to have one thing to do, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have one thing to do, and it's going to be run or survive. That's it. Dowdy, to address your point, though, about the presidency, the presidents were never supposed to determine yeah. the the you know where the country's going. They were their figureheads. Yeah, ceremonial figureheads. Every, everything, everything outside of three things is supposed to be delegated to the states. Everything else is a state's problem. So you're not supposed to have this massive central government authority that has all this control over each state and their budgets and their finances and then dictating what happens all the way down to our street. That's not supposed to take place. Now that we've had that entanglement for so long and it's so deep, when, when, when the crack happens and things start to crumble, it's going to affect all the way down to here the hardest. And we have not experienced... A shutdown of basic necessities until, like water and electricity. Until someone storms through your house years. and shuts your life down, I'm not buying it. I know when who is, I'm robbing when shit goes down. Here's at least kidding, yeah, here's at least two things that we know according to what's reported. Um, if Hillary wins, uh, Putin has already said it's war, and that's been clear. So if Trump wins, we know we will Putin at least says as much shit as Trump says, hey, man. I don't know, man. Trump was saying Trump was figure if you're a head of state coming out and, and reporting that outright. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, we're not talking about third world countries bickering with each other here. We're talking about world powers coming out and making this clear. And so, you know, Hillary, he's he's straight out said if Hillary's president, it's war. So if Trump becomes president, we know that we're not going to go to war because of that. I mean, it doesn't mean we're not going to go to war, but at least we know that won't be initiated and there's no way he can stop the economic crisis there's no way that's going to happen no matter who's president no he's but, just going to put up his own money to do it no he it's not even <laughs> going to help him check for 20 trillion no actually well, it's like 180 trillion if his money is in the u.s <laughs> dollars it's not even going to help him oh, yeah. everyone's going down well we're going to keep printing more money guys come on it won't work <laughs> As long as we keep printing more money. Well, once all the other countries figure out that America pays its bills by printing more and more money, they're going to say, well, we're going to stop. You talk like you know more than anyone, though. Well, I've I've watched the economy like a hawk. Yeah, you've been on YouTube a lot. No, I've watched the economy like a hawk for the last two and a half years. I'm not I'm not telling everyone that I'm that I'm that everything I'm saying is right. I'm just saying what I'm reporting, what I'm telling you has already happened. And if you want, you know, I guess if you want my input, I'll tell you kind of some possibilities. I'm saying there's a very high possibility. I would call it a certainty of these things happening. And I think I think in the, the 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 world today, I think there's a lot of speculation because right now we are such a sensationalist society that no matter what happens when things go wrong even in the slightest sense left or right we look at everything and we go holy fuck Mm -hmm. if it keeps going in this direction this is what could happen but those are things like those are keywords like could would should these things like you can base certain things off of history but 
for the largest part, you have to take, like, Trump. You have no idea what this guy's capable of right now. I mean, based on what he's done throughout his campaign, obviously the guy's got a long way to go before he's ever, like, presidentially fit. And I think that Hillary's the same way. How presidentially fit do you want him to be in comparison to the past presidents that we've had? No, what I'm saying is this. No, 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 wait. I think he could lose some weight. How presidentially (laughs) fit do you want him to be? Okay. Well, first of all, he can run a three-minute mile. That's that's all I'm asking for. The world record? Do you think? <laughs> do you think uh, Hillary can do that? I think if she's, I think if it's that time of the month, I think she could. No, I, no, I, I take I'll, that back. Yeah. What I'm saying, what I'm saying uh, is this. What I'm saying is this. When we look at presidential candidates, I think we hold a certain standard, and I think for the largest part, Trump has completely blown that standard out of the water. Excellent. We look at somebody yeah. who is a career politician. We look at somebody who treats everybody with some amount of fairness and respect. I mean, yes, politicians aren't supposed to do that, but the. But here's the thing. We're talking about public perception, right? We're talking I'm about talking public about policy. perception. No, it, we're po- not talking about the irrelevant. internal workings because a majority of the American people don't know about the internal workings of policy. So I'm sorry. What, so what a presidential candidate has to do, or on some level, which apparently is not the case now, but in the past, what they had to do was make themselves public, publicly presentable. The now, pres- all, Trump is, the- all Trump has done, and I think that Hillary is, her, her, everything that we've got on her from Benghazi, so on and so forth, and now her recent Trumps over the weekend, about the DNC, the email leaks, and so on against uh-huh. Russia. I think what we're doing is we're seeing Trump is being overtly publicized with all of like everything. He's just trying to get ahead of the game, stay ahead of the game. Like he you guys aren't going to get, man. you guys aren't <laughs> yeah. going to get shit on me. I'm going to give it to you before he's, he's going to I'm going to give you what I want no, you no, to know. He's right? not trying to do anything. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All he's saying is I'm going to give it to you before you have a chance to dig it up. Yes, I'm going to turn around and say that I believe that we should build a goddamn wall 200 feet high between here and fucking Mexico. Yes, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to blast, you know, Fox News reporters for, you Hell know, yeah. being fucking, you know, being Fox News reporters. for being but, kindergartners. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, that's what I'm saying. I, I think now what we're looking at, we're looking at a presidential campaign where there's two candidates that they're both attacking it from different angles, but I think that they're both they're both coming down to that same mindset of spectacle is spectacle. Whatever happens and whatever you find out about me now, it doesn't matter because one of us has yeah, to Yeah, but if you're going to speculate, wouldn't you err on the side of the guy who's saying he's going to protect the borders and the guy who's saying he's going to you know, tell Wall Street to get fucking lost? Wouldn't you err on that side instead of on the, on the side of the person who's taking all the money from Wall Street and who's murdering? Wants to bring in hundreds of thousands of more yeah. Syrian immigrants? <laughs> yeah, I've said, I've said since, since the beginning of this whole entire goddamn campaign, and especially since it was narrowed down to Trump and Hillary. We are literally, and I said this previous to the fact, when there were more candidates like Cruz and Sanders and everybody else, John Kasich, I've said that we literally are picking between the lesser of evils. Yeah. I think that no, in no, some no. way, How shape, or form... How is Trump evil? That has not been established yet. How is he evil? The guy literally holds little to no respect for anybody. That's not the evil. I mean, I'm a, I'm a dick. I'm not an evil person. <laughs> But I'm you're a, a I'm dick, a, you're evil. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, sometimes I'm a dick. <laughs> right. You know? Sometimes it's and, and everyone's guilty of this. Everyone Absolutely. listening right now. No right. one no one I'm not trying to take a holier than the now position for right. anybody. I'm guilty of everything that I say. I'm just saying just because I'm a dick sometimes does right. not mean my behavior is evil. Do you know what you're saying when you say evil? You're saying you have now crossed that boundary to you have physically deliberately or you have not physically, but you have deliberately caused injury or damage to persons or property. I think that's probably a, a pretense for my part. That's that's what evil means. I think that's a, but I think that's a pretense on my part. I think that there what is. Do you mean? I th- I think that there is some damage to come if Trump becomes president. But I also think the Absolutely. same thing with Hillary. But it's not because he's evil. There's going to be damage. He's an idiot. Most of it is out of his control. He doesn't control. understand politics. Okay, he wait a minute. So he's an idiot. Completely flip flops on his. Th- wait a minute. He has a wait book minute, where he minute, completely. Wait, 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 hang on. So if you're an idiot, does that make you evil? I, I, I don't agree. For the I, don't, no, 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 I never no, said no. anything about him being evil. Well, I'm, I'm still on this I question. Oh. I did. Okay, well, so, then I should on. let you finish no, I, answering well, I, that. I do want to address that, but let's, <laughs> let's take that point. If you are an idiot, does that make you evil? Idiot literally no, means it doesn't. in Greek. No, no, it doesn't. The actual Greek answer, word. Let, okay, answer, let, nice answer, let me answer the question and say this. I'm talking on a scale of who's the bigger pile of horseshit when it comes down to it. I think that there's a lot of disagreeing points for a lot of for both the candidates. But how come you're not answering the question? I take back what I said about the lesser of two evils. So you have one that's not evil and one that's evil. 
who's evil out of the two of them? Hillary. <laughs> How is she evil? She has no, no, exhibited she, evil you, behavior. Okay, I'm, she I, has murdered. I can't, I can't let this continue. Um, we're, yeah. Evil, all that stuff. We're talking in almost comic book terms here. Okay, I do want to say this, though, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we can finish on this. Um, as far as the lesser of two evils and so forth, people have now succumbed to that idea that we have to vote for the lesser of two evils. Right. Hmm. Both candidates are running on the platform that they're not the other person. When you get to that point, you're, you, you are doomed. You are doomed. The problem is people are very aware, and they've even admitted openly this is an entire circus of a voting system it's rigged we have corrupt people up top we it's it's all bullshit they they admit this this is this is something that they they outright speak with their own face Mm -hmm. and say these words and are aware of it yet they still walk to the voting booths on november 4th or 8th or whatever and they cast a vote for the shittiest evilest person secondly second evilest person they can think of or that's put forward to them they still vote and the circus when you vote for this, you are an audience member in this circus. You don't get to choose what the circus is going to do. You're Certainly. just there to enjoy the show. And when Absolutely. you vote, you applaud the shitty circus. You applaud this show. And every time you vote, it, it, people, there's like 9% of voter turnout in America right now. <laughs> it's single digits. They're still doing it because 9% of people are stupid <laughs> enough to walk over to the booth and say, oh, and go with the red and team. The other, yeah, okay, the okay, other 91% okay. are subject to it. And the 91% are subject to, to, the, to the will of 9% of the people okay. who are going to use the arm of the state. Okay, hold Absolutely. on. Go hold ahead. Hold on, hold on. Hi, by the way, I'm Dowdy. I'm, uh, I'm also on this show. <laughs> My role in this whole thing, too, is I, I try to play from the realist aspect, uh, tr- try to get down human nature, you, like personally. I, I understand your doom and gloom. Alan, I've been hearing your doom and gloom thing for years. You, you, you're the Christian who speaks of revelations every single year, uh, waiting for end times because you want to see the end of the movie. Um, I'm, I'm, when it comes to these two presidential candidates, Hillary... I wouldn't say is evil. I would say she is power hungry and she's not in it for you for sure. She wants a title and she wants more power. She craves it. At the same time, Trump, of course he wants power too. Trump does have a strong business acumen. He's looking at the country like a business. And with all the shit that we've gone through in the last, what, 12 years? Economy crash, all that crap? Uh... We probably could use somebody. The other thing is everyone talks about we want a president who's not a politician. We want somebody who's not one of them. Yeah. Well, you got one. We don't want Trump. Okay, so who the fuck did you want? Mother Teresa to step up to well, the plate? He's Republican. If they got a Democrat that wasn't the politician, you'd see the fucking halo written on, on all over his forehead. Everybody talks in these narratives, though. No one talks about people as people or understanding like the bigger picture of who, who they are, what they represent. Now, Hillary, I do believe there's some bad shit she can lead us to because she doesn't care now when you alan when you talk about the fall of the world that's coming in two weeks you probably mark it on your calendar you've probably been crossing that date out and remarking it every two weeks forever singing a different tune in the near, very near future oh uh, we didn't want to go down that road <laughs> no um, i'm just we, we we keep talking about the, this end of, end of times thing also understand all these people in power who we, who's been pulling all these strings that everyone talks about do you, do you think they're going to allow the the fall of mankind to happen here in America because yes, it would fuck the up the their show. plan? Yes. No, no. Their plan is that's that there's, is their plan. There's no end game here. So Chris. what? Do they want to be on an island all by themselves, watching yeah. the rest no. of the world burn? They get the planet. No one fights back. Yeah. They win. There's no plan here, man. They, but you're saying play, you've played played no, risk. You're saying <laughs> yep. this, it's a it's a, a, a real life hey, risk game. Please wa- oh, watch the overtalk, you guys. Right. Sorry. Um, sorry. When when it when it comes to the world burning, the the economy crashes and all that stuff, like there, there's no sitting back and watching, saying no one's fighting back. When you get to the human desperation, the world burning and everything bad, things definitely change. They're never going to allow something to get to that point. They'll print more money. They'll hand out more food stamps. They will give you a tax return bigger, like they did, you know, eight years ago or something. Yeah. They'll do things to yeah. make people happy. There will never be a full collapse because they can't allow it. I'll tell you what it is. Here, and you're 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 right. They need us to feed off of so what they what they do with these collapses and everything they, okay so the united states is is one of the youngest countries on the planet i don't know of any other that sprouted up in the last 250 years probably somewhere in africa they we had the freest market and we created the wealthiest country and the number one superpower within two centuries that's insane I mean that's that's absolutely mm-hmm. insane that the amount speed of, of time wealth, the han dynasty going four thousand yeah. years you know shit like yeah, that that amount of wealth generated that fast before the 19th century before the 19th century is the reason 
we've been subjected to the to the central reserve, central bank and everything, Federal Reserve and so forth. This the the end game is the destruction of the engine that drives the wealth that feeds the middle class because that middle class is what keeps the country robust enough to keep it independent from a central government so once you destroy the middle class you mm-hmm. have a banana republic where people on top are fed from the people on the bottom banana. Na, na, na. <laughs> but, okay uh, let me let me go from a different aspect as far as uh, the the average citizen this 99 percent of some people will say and all that yeah um i know my mom's listening sorry mom gotta do this <laughs> Drug use, man. I was I was a cocaine addict for a couple of years. Yep. And one of the things when you're high on a drug, you start to come down. You got to do what they call a bump. You could do another line because mm-hmm. that fall sucks. Oh yeah. America will continuously bump mm-hmm. their people to keep them in that high. Now the high can be pretty shitty. Maybe you got a lot of uh, baby laxatives cut into it. Doesn't matter. But they're going to keep it feeding to you in some way. It can never be allowed to completely collapse. Until and you then you're also we're only talking about America here. That cocaine has to come from somewhere. What, what happens when the cocaine no 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 you're, you're missing the, the, the you're going the wrong way on the cocaine. No no, um, no this is a great uh, analogy actually. Going this, the right way. This is beautiful. Because <laughs> you, you said you can. It's keep being cutting supplied it. by someone. Well yeah exactly. And you got to work for it and you got to keep doing something. Exactly. So you're a slave on. to it. Yeah exactly. So you said the baby laxative cutting it makes it really shitty well that's that's the same thing as a federal reserve printing a bunch of money and dumping into the economy you're watering down the dollar bill Mm -hmm. eventually your dealer after he's given you so much and you keep borrowing you keep fronting these sacks and he's like okay i'll give you one more okay here's another bump okay here's another bump i'll just keep i'll keep building your tab that tab's gonna come due one day you're not gonna have anything left to give, or you're not going to have any credit or anything of value that that dealer is going to trade. Yeah, and then you, you got to learn to stand on your own two feet, and you get past it. Yeah, except you owe them six point eight quadrillion yeah. dollars. Oh, no one so gives us you on credit first. <laughs> but what's it? What, okay, and so let me build off that real quick. What's the deal with credit though? Because when we think about it like this, are you talking about the more and more you print money, the more and more it's getting watered down? The same as the more and more you cut cocaine with baby laxative, the more and more it's just becoming baby laxative, yes. right? Okay, so eventually you cut down the cocaine far enough with enough baby laxative. One day you run out of coke, and everybody comes dependent on baby laxative on some in some way, shape, or form. Oh, conditioning gosh. over the decades and centuries, or whatever the time. case is. And what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this. Now, there's been so much money printed, but think about it. If you have a credit card in your wallet, if you have a debit card attached to your bank account, if you have direct deposit from your job Mm -hmm. and you never, I could go literally two weeks without ever seeing a goddamn dollar of my money. It's just there in credit, right? So when the money runs out, there's still credit. That's why they built credit because they wanted it doesn't do any good. They wanted the money to circulate in the background, but they wanted the illusion of money. But it doesn't do any good if gasoline is sixty dollars a gallon. No, 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 no. no, no. Your your credit, your debit card, your credit card are still paying for your gas. Of course, but that's only going to work for a few days because the next day it's going to be one hundred and fifty dollars a gallon, and then the next day it's going to be three hundred dollars a gallon. But that's not that's not dependent on credit or debit, though, Alan. That's not dependent. On credit or debit, what that's dependent on? on. Captain Overtalk wants silence. Hold on. I waited a while. Hang on. (laughs) <laughs> okay, when you when everyone starts figuring out, holy shit, this avalanche ain't going to stop. Right, no one's going to even rely on the credit. They go, well, I mean, all I have is ten thousand dollars on my credit right now. That's going to get me through four and a half days. You know, I can I can apply for another credit card. But how long how, how long do you plan on the system running like that, where everyone's panicking and all they can do? I mean, obviously, everyone who el- everyone else but who's given us money, hang on. on, all these other countries are loaning. That's- that's the thing. We've been running on credit. How long That's has not the there. system been running on credit already? We're not talking about once well, the world years. collapses. There's, yeah, okay. there's two ways to answer it, that question. For the last decade, I've heard the, the statement, when's China going to finally collect their debt? When that happens, we're all fucked. No country's going to collect their debt because this debt is not uh, real. They will when they anyone. find out that we have to pay sixty dollars for a gallon of gas. So you say, know, but they shit. don't know. China's they're, like they're listening they're in right now, together, going, man. "Oh my god, we have them where we wanted them." <laughs> but they're going to put it together when the U.S. says, "Hey, can uh, can we borrow uh, nine uh, bajillion dollars?" And China's going to say, "Oh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to loan them a whole bunch of money now when their when their fucking economy is going through the fucking roof. The I'm, I'm going to loan them money right now. They're obviously never going to pay me back, and when they do pay me back, it's not going to be worth." 
worth shit because the nine gazillion dollars that I give them today, when I get paid back, is going to be worth twenty bucks. So no one, no one's going to fall for it at that point. All these countries are going to say, why, why are we spending all this effort building these resources and sending them to the U.S. so the U.S. can do what they want? Let's build our own resources and take care of our own country. And as soon as that happens, bam, 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 bam. Brexit yeah. is a perfect example. Brexit just did the same exact thing in Europe, and all the other countries are now are having to pay for, are going to have to pay for what England, the whole you know European continent was it relying on England to pay for that. There on that and, Brexit thing. and England left, and they so England, right. England had all the gold. And now the England's leaving and now all the rest of the countries are panicking because now not only do they have to keep paying for the crash that's going on in Europe, but now they, they have the to difference. cover the cost of England yeah. just leaving. So they're saying, fuck this. So France is like, Psh, I'm going. Psh, I want to, to, I want to go back. They don't have to worry about it. They're reopening negotiations with South Korea. So they, no, all, the, all the Arab nations are not are no longer accepting the U.S. dollar. They're only accepting gold. That's a perfect prime example of if it's already starting. And I mean, I could go on forever. I know I should. I do want to go back to Ben, though, about the credit and debit about buying gas and so forth the money that you have on a card that's just digital numbers yeah. on in a bank account um as as the real inflation hits the gallon of gas going from six dollars a gallon to 18 dollars a gallon one day sure and as the money continues to crash it's going to be 18 you know 28 dollars the next day yeah there will be within a few days be that you'll see this swing the graph literally goes from like five dollars a gallon to like three thousand dollars a gallon in two weeks. Like it's it's that's what the that's what the graph looks like during an economic crash every single time. Sure. For all this stuff, there will be a day where you will not accept anybody's U- United States Federal Reserve notes because you know they're worthless. Right. Yeah. Your credit and debit is the exact same way. If you take the money to somebody and say, "Hey, I've got five hundred dollars," they're like, well, "That doesn't mean anything." But that's it's like if they, it's like if someone says, "I'll give you I'll give you a thousand rupees." For your car. Oh, certainly. <laughs> but I agree. <laughs> I agree. And, that, and, and that's the thing. And that's the point I was trying to make is, look, we've been cutting down the cocaine for so long yeah. that we introduce the credit system and say, well, this is just the greatest way, the most convenient way to spend money. And this really, <laughs> all, it did, all it did was prove that we could live without real tangible money. They for just had while. to tell us for that there was money. Right? For a while, but that's yeah. what I'm saying, but listen, and, and that and that yeah. is what's really going to contribute to the downfall of the dollar because we've been using credit. We've been there. People yeah. are racking up tens of thousands of dollars yeah. in debt every year. The United States owes more than more money than exists on the planet. Earth. Right? Credit is the baby laxative. Right? Credit so, is the baby laxative when it really comes. No, down no. To credit the is the crack reserve. from the coke. It's it's yeah. the cheaper. It's the it's the shittier version. Credit is taking the last little Point ounces take. of what's better, left. Better example. And just shaving off and, and yeah. yeah now, you know what I mean? when you say printing money, yeah. What what has to happen for them to do that is it has to be substantiated in law as something that will be eventually paid either by the taxpayer or by a country that loans the money. Sure, Hang on. but that no, no, no. That it won't. It won't. That's that's why the system doesn't crash. Is because it's relying on something that's going to happen de- years down the road, and so if you. Um you know, if it's going to happen years down the road, then you can you, you can tag it on the taxpayer, you can tag it on the other countries. But if you just start printing money out of nowhere and it's not substantiated in policy as something Certainly. that's going to get paid back, that's when the crash happens. So that's right. why you can't just keep printing and go for it because as soon as everyone figures out that it's bullshit, no one's going to legislate into policy but to print more money. Because but what are we now? What are we now? We're we're sixteen. Is it right? Uh, am I right? I'm not looking at it right now. But are we good. sixteen trillion dollars in debt? There's a sixteen trillion, uh, eighteen in, or so trillion in debt, and the unfunded the, liabilities is like well a, past two hundred trillion. And, and is yeah. it, it isn't. It, can't we all agree that eighteen trillion dollars in debt is eighteen trillion dollars too much? Yes. At this point. Well, you. I mean, the government still still ha- still owes eighteen. Two hundred trillion dollars every year, something like that. That they spend for all the stuff that we get for the government taking care of us. By the way, right. so we're on. We're also on the hook for that. It's just uh, the the debt itself. I don't. I don't know how that works. We're all going to. Oh, well, there in which the Department of the Interior gets absolutely jack shit each month. That's why our national parks burn, while the Department of Defense gets every penny and plus what they ask for. Yeah, well, they need the military to back up the dollar that's of now course. worthless. Well, if you want a perfect example of misappropriation of funds, it's a government. Yeah. So what, Look, what were you expecting I, I, I get it. I get it. But what I'm, what I'm saying is this. I mean, in this whole discussion, the one thing I'm taking away from this is that money, finance, will somehow be the collapse of the U.S. economy, right? I mean, yes. you know, just we, we stand on the, you know, the fucking pixie sticks or mm. what, what was that game called? You know, where you pull the sticks out and the marbles just fall oh, down, yeah. right? Kerplunk or That's something? That's the Kerplunk, right? Oh. So we literally are playing a game of Kerplunk. I mean, yeah. each, you know, each day, like one more stick gets pulled out of there and all of a sudden, like the marble 
marble just keeps falling further and further down. Yeah. And it's like, what and who is ultimately going to be responsible well, for that final straw being pulled and when the federal, before that marble hits the floor? Yeah. And when the Federal Reserve prints money, what that means is lowering interest rates. You can't print money without lowering interest rates. Sure. And they're already at basically zero, and they've been at zero for about 10 years. And so um, when you... When you lower interest rates or you print more money, what you're doing is you're taking whatever that platform the marble's going to fall on, and you're just lowering the platform. Right. Yeah. So it's the marble's already falling. <laughs> well, are you lowering? Yeah, a, are you lowering the floor or are you raising the, floor. the debt ceiling? No, you're lowering the floor so that the marble keeps falling, and everyone still thinks it's running, but the collapse has already happened. It's already in motion. Yeah, you, you have, maybe, you have maybe, a collapsing floor at the same time. That you have a marble that's falling at the same time. You, you have a, a floor that's falling through policy to make it look like everything is still not falling. And so when they raise the debt ceiling, you can think of that as the same way. Well, they're, that's what I was saying. I mean, are, we, are, we, are we lowering the floor or guess, raising yeah, the debt ceiling? That's what I mean, you know, yeah. I mean the same thing. But. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a break. Yeah. And we'll come back with news from Ben. Okay. And... I have something I'll, I'll come back with. Yeah. I think I think we need to get... Uh, I'm getting uh, enough responses here. Uh, I got a what the fuck immediately on, on the phone. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I, I think if you want, you got to... You get, you got to defend yourself. Or you got to... You, not defend. You got to lay out your thoughts. I think uh, people know your base. They what might understand what doing? it is. <laughs> and it could also just be just straight aluminum foil. Who knows? Tell him to call in. I'll go toe to toe with him. Yeah. Uh, Where you know, the at? world never calls in. Yeah, Let's that's this. what a pussy um, is. We're <laughs> taking a break. It's the kick here on Longbox.fm. Go recharge. Listening to the kick on Longbox.fm. The Dirty Dowdy Podcast on Longbox.fm. You know about it. The Dirty Dowdy Podcast, the show that airs live every Wednesday night here on Longbox.fm from 7 to 9 o'clock. We bring in various guests, bands, musicians, comedians, anyone, everyone. We always have a good time. We always throw back to Riley's Brewing. We know how to have a lot of fun. Uh, check out the show. If you haven't ever seen it before, you can easily find it. Go to iTunes. Go to our site. Go to Stitcher. There's many ways to see, listen, all that fun stuff. Also, check out our 360 videos. That's all up there on the website, longbox.fm. If you uh, if you like interesting videos, you can go check out the 360, which gets you all the angles, all the views. You can check out our video podcast, our audio podcast. We do it all. And we can get you on the show. All you have to do is hit us up. Tell us what you want to get on the show. We'll book a date for you. Remember, that's Wednesday night, live, the Dirty Daddy Podcast. Yes. You'll be able to participate. You can call us. You can Skype us. You can chat us. All those fun things. You can be a part of the show as we do this rowdiness every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock here on Longbox.fm. Longbox.fm. Fresh, local, new music. Style like Revelator. The kick is back here, longbox.fm, brought to you, of course, by Riley's Brewing. Riley's it is. Thank you, Riley's. Damn. Oh, well, we ha- I need Dan Riley back here again soon. I know he's taking me shooting. I get to fire my first gun. Ooh. Is he Lucky. taking you out to pasture? Uh, t- maybe after tonight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it is the kick. We do want to hear from you. Uh, I've been getting nonstop messages. Um, Let's read some. No, uh, they're not the the messages to read. Uh, I'm getting a lot of the messages though. Like what's going on? Like uh, obviously the there's there's some straight yeah. hard talk going on tonight, and not our normal type of show. And so I I encourage you if you're listening out there, <laughs> don't be afraid. Pick up the phone four nine two zero four five zero or keep chatting on the chat room. Uh, Skype Longbox FM or Longbox FM on Skype and be a part of this. We got a. We didn't do it at the beginning of the show. Let's go ahead, uh, Ben. You weren't here last week. Welcome back. I was not, and thank you for the uh, warm yet icicle welcome. Uh, <laughs> That's right. You were gone. I was. I was. Uh, That's a good one. <laughs> down on life last Monday. No, la- last yeah, last Monday. Uh, Van was kicking in. Um, I think we already we already hit up your RNC DNC stuff. 
Go ahead, hit us with the rest of the news that you got. Well, for the most part, I, I really want to touch on a few things, which uh, over the weekend, what kind of struck me was this whole feud between uh, Donald Trump. Of course, we've got mm. to involve Trump in some way here <laughs> lately. And uh, the fallout between him and the Khan family, which if anybody who's anybody doesn't know, that was uh, a man named Humayun Khan, who was uh, an Arab... American or more appropriate, well, an Arab American soldier. He was a captain in the U.S. Army, and uh, he was killed in the line of duty during Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2004. And uh, basically, I, the the title of this segment was Trump versus Gold Star Families, because anybody that does, and just for anybody that doesn't know what a Gold Star family is, it's any family who is uh, the surviving family members of a relative who was killed in the line of duty, which uh, Kazir Khan and uh, his wife. Uh, uh, the mother of uh, Humayun Khan, uh, they were invited to speak at the Democratic National Convention this last week and basically took the time to rip into Donald Trump. Uh, and and really, what struck me was Donald Trump, and here's where I'm going to send stalwart on this. First of all, I've got supreme love for anybody who decides to sign away their life in the line of duty. Mm. I think that you really have to have some set of balls. And I, I put myself aside because obviously I, I'm, I'm not trying to trump my... Fuck. How do I do, <laughs> say that? I'm not trying to build myself up here. But what I'm trying to say is it takes a certain amount of person, if it's that right time in your life, to really, you know... Put your life on the line for your country and get deployed into a, a battle zone and to really stand your ground against, you know, people who are going to try and kill you. And now, obviously, all of the specifics and mechanics of, you know, the Iraq war aside, because obviously there are a lot of different factors on a lot of different levels. I think the biggest thing about this was the fact that Donald Trump took the time to rip into the Khan family because... They ultimately started this bullshit with him and said, well, look, you don't understand what it's like to be a Muslim American in this country. And Donald Trump fired back and said, well, it's not Muslim Americans. Hold on. Hold it's on. Uh, why? What? Why were they there? It was clear. They were they were there because back to, in December. No, they were there to represent the Democratic side. Of course, they, they put were. together the Rainbow Coalition mm -hmm. and put them up there. They found someone to to. Trump up on stage and, and to throw down some barbs to bring that sympathy vote because the D DNC is all about all America. And as we've been learning here, just specifically in the last three weeks, it's full of shit. It's hollow. Uh, so that's what it was. The thing with Trump, and there was a tweet that she put out, or no, the, the thing that she said, uh, do you want a guy who can be baited by a tweet running the nukes? Which, okay, first off, uh, it's not like he's looking at his phone and going, oh, fuck that. Nuke, go! Right. As and if then, he has control over it anyway. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure there is an app for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. His, uh, his response, unfortunately, was a tweet attacking her. Uh, and he didn't say anything smart. He just trumped it. Uh, yeah. He should have said, I'll email you about my response classy it, like <laughs> something smart but it, it, we're, we're showing the volatility now again when he's elected i think he's going to be elected uh, yeah i'm yes. hoping over hillary he, he's um, gonna devastate her well i'm hoping anyone debate. else other but anyways it he just posted a picture on twitter of himself eating kentucky fried chicken on what appears to be first class because he's good with the negroes uh, <laughs> it would be popeyes that's uh, he has kfc <laughs> very true you could see the yeah, Robert Tito's versus uh, Taco Bell. Um, oh, God. <laughs> he, uh, of he's no unhinged, but do you think... I mean, the moment he's elected, he's not going to be allowed to just hit his phone anytime he wants. He's going to try to keep that personality going, but he's going to have... Th that's why Mike Pence was, was selected. Uh, that's the, the very whitewashed, very generic general guy that's like, the, here's the balance to Trump. So uh, you, DNC is bringing up all these people, the color coalition. Let's talk about how bad he is. Trump's side, uh, the RNC side, as much as they hate him, he's in. They're going to make sure that he doesn't do anything fucking crazy or weird other than being on a live mic, which you can't protect he's but at the same time i think them. trump's not an idiot i think he's doing a lot of stuff now to get people's attention i just want to point out now that we've got a chance here trump has been 
running now for a pretty good chunk of time, right? Six months, uh-huh. eight months or so, a year. Since a year. Um, has he said or done anything that has actually damaged his campaign? No. No. He's smart right and everything. Nope. The fact that's, that he, that's it right there. he made a tweet during the DNC that everybody got all about. About the emails in Russia and shit. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And everybody talked about him during the DNC. Yep. He's not an idiot. No. He knows what he's doing. He knows show business. He knows how to keep himself in the forefront like a Kardashian or, or Kanye West. He knows yep. how to win a presidency. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he also said that Russia would never involve, invade the Ukraine, even though they already have, by partially occupying the Crimean He's not sea, a part so. of it anymore. The second he gets elected, he's going to walk into a room full of people going, all right, asshole, you represent us. You're the puppeteer, quote unquote, but we're pulling your strings. So you're going to say and do what we tell you to do, how we tell you to do it. You're not going to be able to just go. You're not going to be on your period and just bomb someone. Uh, you can do all the blistery. Uh, we're going to take down ISIS and da, da, all, all that you want. They're but you, nothing gets done right now. No, he tells them what to do at this point. Why? Because they know that he's the guy who gets their team elected. No, because he knows everyone's watching, and he's going to keep whipping around it's like a rag doll like he did everyone else. If he there. was a radio state, if he was this show, he was the DDP. He was Longbox. He's doing everything right in a, in, a, in a sense that I you know I don't approve of it, but he's doing it. He's getting attention. He knows what he's doing to get the popular vote. It's more than that. So you think he's just a, a guy who's just going to let loose and just bomb whoever, say whatever, do whatever? No, I'm saying he's brilliant. I'm saying he knows how to do all of that, and he also happens to be a nationalist. He also happens to, at least somewhat, you know, wants to kind of protect the sovereignty of our country. And and like Kevin said, or not, maybe it's all a big illusion as well, but going off the information that I see so far, it seems pretty clear. I mean, he's just kind of, he's whipping everyone around. But who was it years ago that said all bad, or said all news is good news? Because, I mean, if your name's constantly in headlines, mm-hmm. then your name is constantly in other people's mouths. And but how, how far can your that name go is, before he shoots himself in the foot? Your name that? is one of two Until names. Until someone finds out you're full of shit. No, your name is one of two names on a ballot that really actually matters. It, so... No one's screaming Hillary is the princess of the world. Right. It doesn't matter (laughs) if people think you're an asshole as long as they're talking about you more. Because when you get in, and I'm sure there's listeners, and and please uh, tell me, but I know you won't. You've gone into a voting booth, and you voted for someone because you recognize the last name. Joaquin Arambula. His father ran. He he was a a politician here in the Valley. Uh, Joaquin Arambula gets in. Because name recognition matters. Yeah. He had a decent fight, yeah. won it clearly over a guy who was on TV. But again, name recognition matters. Trump's playing the entertainer role, the popular authority guy. All, I mean, we've been talking about him since the 80s. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is nobody can attack his actual policies, though. They attack his character. They attack his mm-hmm. hair. They attack what he says, what, the, way he st- the way he talks. Oh, there's going to be, be his great wife, all this Charlie stuff. Hebdo uh, av- or, uh, uh, cartoon stuff about him forever. Yes, yeah. that'll be great. Uh, just like Barack Obama and the big ears. Yeah. We're going to get a lot of that. But Trump is not going to be... Uh, I, I'd like to think... And I'm saying right now, I think I may vote for him or Gary Johnson. I And, and I hate that third-party vote because I know Don't it's vote. a waste. Um, <laughs> You're just clapping, man. I think, though, he is that guy that's got the business acumen. And everyone listening, I know there's some there's some millennials right now go, but what about all the bankruptcies? What bankruptcies are smart business plans what when you them? realize that your business is failing, so you get out with the minimal cost to your effect. And look at the other successful businesses. How about there's Hillary's you? never worked? Yeah. So Well, she worked during uh, the, the late 80s to early 90s when she ran Bill Clinton. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. This yeah. time with a vagina. Clinton, Clinton Enterprises. Uh, speaking of Hillary Clinton, uh, so Hillary Clinton sees a, uh, depending on which news source you happen to uh, feed into, it's either a seven or a nine point lead over the weekend. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so sure. can I stop you here? Um, <laughs> those polls mean shit. Of course they, they do. only poll past voters. They don't poll right. current voters. Yeah. Right. This is why Bernie Sanders never got the love as far as the polls and what we're seeing. No, uh, that was... And so those you're right. The past, the, past, the past polls that we're referring to are actually put up here. 
Uh, the poll was conducted by telephone July 29th through the 31st. Mm-hmm. So they literally ended yesterday. Look, the Bernie polls were, were done. Um, he, he got screwed on that. But again, look at the poll. The poll is another tool for those who need their team to win. Yeah, they certainly. Just, they just make certainly. up shit. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. This is all it is. And then you see it in the, in the news, too. You see that uh, NBC, or Late Night with Jackass, whoever, uh, says, you know, the polls say Hillary's got it. Now, one thing when you hear that, you go, well, she's got it by like 87 points, so there's no point in going anymore. So, so why the, are you the, voting? That people don't vote for who they want to vote because they already heard they lost. So why get out of your house or why find your polling booth or that's, whatever? That's, that's still good though. We want less people to vote. I think it's a, I think it's <laughs> schools of fish. I think it's just fish leading other fish in a school of fish, really, because it's who did you vote for? Well, I'm going to vote for him because you're my friend and I trust your opinions. And you know, I mean, no matter what you do, you're going to vote. That's why it's the popular vote because you're going to get out there and you're going to vote for who everybody else thinks is I, popular. I understand where the Spencers come from here. <laughs> Um, the don't vote thing. Yeah. Uh, and I've always been someone, I, I've fallen into that. You know, like we're in California. We already know it's democratic, no matter what it's, we do. It's not apathy, though, that I'm saying don't vote. Yeah. But go ahead. I'm not There's but, still a lot of props and stuff that affects you locally. So at the very least, vote for that. It's the bare, to me, it's the bare yeah. goddamn minimum of your participation in the government, the world, the state, the country that you live in. And if you don't vote, don't bitch to me for who's in. You actually, you you actually, if you do vote, then you can't bitch, because if you do vote, you bullshit. Are con- yeah, it's you- a free country. People can bitch whenever they want about whatever they want Certainly. when they want to. No, I'm just I'm bitch, no, no. bitch, bitch, I'm bitch. To if you if you vote, that means you're actively participating in what's happening around you. Exactly. Before Alan goes into it, I'll say, we just sat here and all agreed openly. That it's a goddamn clown game and it's corrupt through and through. That's not disagreeable. Why in the hell would you play a cheated game? Why would you do that? Honestly, I mean, why would anybody, why would you advise anybody? Kevin, you go to the casinos all the time, right? Yes. By choice. You keep playing. So you don't uh, have a right to And you know what's in the house's favor. By choice. And you keep going. By choice. Now, you do well a lot of times because you're smart you know the math you you, you know Sometimes. when to play when not it's to play it's a gamble either way okay it, well, definition ahead, ahead. gamble yeah. but you still do it you go into a voting booth you vote you read the uh, the the actual bill and what's going on and again we have stupid bills like and I was saying this weekend the family was around town um, things I hate about bills is we can have the do super good things for Jews bill and the actual bill is now if you've passed it, we can gas them anytime we want. Mm-hmm. Ah, well, <laughs> it, it's to actually put the knowledge or put the effort in to learn and find out why. Why is why is so much money coming out of your paycheck? Yeah. Why are these people allowed to do these things? Because um, they're voting. Because people are voting for these things to come out of your That's paycheck. That's why it's coming out of your yeah, paycheck. Yeah, and you're you're surrounded by people voting stupidly around you. Yeah. So you need to knowledge yourself up. Go out there, and at least you've done have. something. <laughs> to just play back and not do anything, you're a pussy. In, the, in this metaphor that you're using, the casino I'm going exactly. to <laughs> doesn't cheat me. When I win, I win, and when I lose, it's because I, I chose to place my bet and play the game. There's no cheating on top of that. In this voting system, there's obviously <laughs> But if cheating. you don't vote... You give up, but if why play, play a cheated game? Why play a cheated game? You don't get to bid. And I think, and I think a, a slot a machine, game. a slot machine, or a voting, a voting <sighs> booth is basically a slot machine in disguise because it's a gamble either way. You put your money in the machine, you no. cast your vote against the system, no. and it's whoever comes out. No, this, it's, it's, not it's an apple to oranges favorite. argument. I mean, the, the, the two really don't equate. It, co- it comes down to I'm not harming anybody except for myself when I lose money at a casino. When I vote for something, I'm voting for violence to be used to fund the the, the resources it takes to if enact If that's what this. you're voting for, though. That's what everything you vote for is. Everything the government does is done through force. Go- government has to be. It's, it's literally the monopolization of the it's use impossible of force. It's impossible to once vote for freedom. For once, I'll somewhat agree with Kevin here in the sense that, uh, and I'll use a, a recent thing that happened. The California Senate voted 28 to 8 to allow them to be exempt from the new gun laws that were forced upon Californians. Surprise. It's bullshit. Yeah. It is. Surprise. You can't just sit back, though, shake your fist, and say that everybody's stupid. Well, You've got to participate I'm in not. the game. No, no, no. 
You gotta, you gotta, you gotta vote. You gotta do nope. something, and then you gotta do something like what we're doing right now, nope. the kick, where we can talk about these things and call it out. Because maybe, maybe people are allowing these things to happen because they just don't care. They're too busy watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians to keep up with California. What I am doing is far more active than what any person is doing. In the oh, Hollywood okay. Go, what are you doing? No, this isn't just this isn't just hyping him. No, nope. I'm the, I'm in the same position. Me. This this is how you get rid of corruption. This is how. You get a, a DNC and an RNC to fall apart. Is you, you get people who are willing to step outside and say, I'm not going to go through the system that's obviously corrupt to try to get a corrupt system to fix itself. The system is corrupt. That's it. It needs to die. It needs to wither and die and start anew. We need to not continue the circus. The circus needs to end. Every but time like, you what vote, do we do now? Because November's really soon, and I don't think we can get our shit it, together. You watch okay. it fall okay. apart. You guys, you guys you don't participate. The Spencer's here. You guys want a revolution, right? You, not or really, you know not one's really. coming. <laughs> <Okay>. Nope. <laughs> Not really. The revolution against uh, United States, the building of the United States, came from uh, uh, anger and going up against Britain, right? Yeah, that's It started coming. with a small spark that grew. Mm, more no, or less. it was fundamental. It's more fundamental okay, okay. In, this, in the I went, psyche of the I went out this last Saturday and I checked out uh, Fierce Creatures at, uh, at Summer Sweat. And uh, my my Cotty was was really interested in what I was doing. I wasn't going around shaking hands and saying, "Listen, long box." I I talked with a, a, a hopefully a guest soon, Brett, for about forty minutes about the kick, and I walked away from him. And I talked to three other people about the kick. Yeah, and it wasn't me starting it; it was them talking about it. Tight. All four people brought it up to me. This is a start of something good. So yeah. all your world's coming to an end bullshit happening? Yes, maybe it is happening, but it you've got to make your revolution in some way. You start in the community. You I'll start you in a thing. way. Uh, go ahead. You, I, you, you want to. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just thought you were done. I thought you were, that was the end of your sentence. Uh, you ahead. jump in before I even finish. Go ahead. I'm sorry, man. I thought it was the end of your sentence. <laughs> if, if I may. You talked for a while. I understand I what you, you mean done. as far as not, because yes, there's a lot of people today that heard uh, some, some shit. And unfortunately, it is it is true. It is mathematically, statistically true that a crash is going to happen. That's That cannot be denied. That's, mm-hmm. That is outside of policy, politics, uh, propaganda, it, all that. It's going to happen. What, what, it's a stock market. What, I know. Crash what you're, happens all the time. What you're saying is don't scare away all the audience, bef- you know, ease them into it. Unfortunately, we, we literally are at a point where we might not have enough time to build a large enough audience to save those people. And I know this sounds like, this, this sounds doom and gloom. This are sounds you talking like about us right now? I'm talking about the people who are listening now. The best that we can do is ring a warning bell, and if they're willing to listen, God help them. If not, we, we, can't, we can't devote more resources to them. People who, who honestly need to hear these things, like Vanna said, what do we do because November's <laughs> coming up? You hunker down, you duck, and you hope to God you have enough to, to bear the winter. Cause What's it's, up, Ostrich? How you doing? No, it's not ostrich, man. No, man. This it's train is coming. Wide open. This this train he's, yeah. he spoke about Everyone earlier is fucking is coming. Ostrich. Like it's literally right in front of us. You have a choice. You can't change it now. The the momentum started decades ago. You have to duck, hope you survive the winter because it's going to be a long cold one. And I'm sorry to sound like, you know, like I'm preaching, but it's 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 honestly coming to this. These signs have been here for a very long time. They've happened throughout history in other countries. It's literally just have to research history and this shit comes up all over the place. Let me ask you, can I Yeah, please. I really want to ask you a question because and as I think back about just the first half of this show and I think back about the past shows that we've had, just as far as the kick is concerned, I think that we have uh, touched on a lot of uh, bright sparks and, and, and resolutions and solutions to things, right? No. But No. Not tonight. No, <laughs> tonight but, is bitching no, and moaning. No, no. no <sighs> but we haven't, we haven't touched on it enough tonight. I was going to finish that by saying that. We haven't touched on it enough tonight. Imagine in your world, in this world that is coming, right? Mm-hmm. In this world that is being prophesized currently. Imagine that this happens, right? The economy falls. The central banking system falls. Yeah. Everything falls to the ground. The trees burn up and wither and die. And we turn into an apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah. Where do we as a people go from that point? 
from say day zero where everything mm-hmm. just collapses and we now this is the first day day zero where we have to restart from everywhere yeah where do we go from there what is the what is the first steps in a solution okay and a rebuild I'll, I'll, you could take comfort in knowing that this is not the first time it's happened so you start over and what happens is everyone's world becomes a hell of a lot smaller. It becomes this bubble where basically as far as, if so, as, far as your eye can see is pretty much what you're going to see the rest of your life, more or less. Mm-hmm. Travel shut down. The roads are clogged with, with vehicles that are out of gas. That's it. There might be some gas left in the pumps, but nobody is shipping more gasoline. So what, you, what resources you have left will eventually work itself out with the people that are willing to survive to keep those resources long enough to get to the point where land can be cleared out, water reservations can be can be stored, food can start being grown, and independence starts over. The entire point. Do you want to reset? The, you have to reset. It's going to reset want itself, it. it's man. It's coming, man. This is not something. We're, I'm not like jumping up and no. down waiting for this shit to but happen. But I hope to God I'm wrong. In the real world. Oh God, ever. But is. there can be a back down, just like in the '80s where we had the Cold War. Everybody had their finger on a trigger. There was multiple nukes. It was growing and not getting when bigger. Two hundred trillion and there was dollars. A back down. The, that, you know, there was. It up. doesn't matter how many dollars because dollars don't diff- fucking matter. No, Actually, let me the, let me touch on. Uh, let me ask you another question because you, you said something a while ago, and I think we were either on break or. Actually, you probably touched on it before we went to break. And then you just said something else, which kind of made me want to ask ask this question. You said that the collapse of the economy is mathematically inevitable, correct? correct? Correct. But then you also just said that you hope to God that it doesn't happen. Yeah. So if it's mathematically inevitable... Is hope necessary at this point? No, nope. my, my feelings don't mean shit. Yep. I, I hope, I, literally, I hope I'm insane and that none of this is true and that the, the storage of water that I have and the small amount of resources that I've gathered never gets used. I swear to God that get, I hope that's let, my future. But then is it really mathematically inevitable? It still yes. is. Okay. This get, is where it comes down to my subjective feelings don't mean shit to the objective truth. Can, let me bring up, internet brought up. Cool. Uh, someone who's been texting me all night. Uh, <laughs> Don't you guys remember Mama Dowdy's recipe for solving an issue? It was last week. Uh, it was along the lines of what's the goal? Realistic ways to get there. What's the plan? Execute, either fail or learn, or you win. Yeah. I'm so. saying I don't care what the plan is. I'm not going to enslave the world to get there. No, but I feel you've already decided the future. You think it's all shit. So you're you're looking to buy land, deal in silver, learn how to shoot a bow and arrow, and, and you you play in that role, but you're you've de- you've checked out of the game now. Yep. Yeah. And this whole show, uh, no, Kevin, you've been here for years. Uh, Alan, you've been uh, political wise. Yeah. You've been here for years. Uh, ben, <laughs> how long how long ago did Republic start? You've been here for years. I started in March. As far as being woke. Y- Get an interest, but I'm not subscribing completely to what you guys say. Now, every one I'm of you say things that, you that that I resonate with me, and I get it. But yeah. it's we don't need to see the whole world fucking burn well, Daddy, to get there. You're gonna we ha- can start to li- get people listen. When you talk about uh, uh, an audience, Alan, I know you wanted to do this show years ago, where you want to get on the show and just do what you did for the first like 45 minutes of the show and just attack and go and go. And I said you would have no listeners, and you said I don't care. I don't. As long as I'm on, as long as I'm saying it, that's all that matters. This, impo- this information who? is important enough to who? I, I can't care if people don't like it. No, you got to build a fucking audience. You got to learn how to get it out there. Well, you got to learn how to build a, a, a interest in what you're talking about and deliver it in a way that people are interested in. Now, I I'm, I'm followed by millennials. How the fuck do I get millennials to sit into a show like what we're doing tonight? Tell them not to listen to me. <laughs> they probably already checked out, man. Daddy. But you got it. You got to find a way to get their interest, talk about it, deliver the knowledge. Otherwise, you're sitting on a fucking island by yourself. Is that the life you want? It when everything goes to shit. Let me let me interject. Um, and this is going to use a metaphor of a sinking ship. When when a ship starts sinking, there are people that are on board saying, "Hey, the ship is sinking," and there are those that aren't paying attention. That's in this metaphor. Um, what you're saying is you want more people to be able to hear the message that, Hey, the sink, the ship is sinking. 
But let's give a little more time to kind of ease people into this comfortable idea that, hey, we're going to have some bad news for you. Or, I know what you're saying. Or, no, I. Uh, there are people counter. on the ship that understand that in 10 minutes, we're all underwater. Mm -hmm. So anybody that wants to uh, give a heads up, there's only a certain amount of lifeboats. The flaw you're or... thinking is that we're all going to die anyways. This is the Titanic here. No, there's a few that can survive. My, if they, if they my ideal is, I'll bring it back to Fresno, the Black Lives Matter protest that happened. Mm -hmm. When they actually went down Blackstone, got on the freeway, 41, the on-ramp. Uh, there were people there, bad actors, who just, they wanted the world to burn. They were yeah. interested in this, just hoorah, let's just go all fucking nuts. Yeah. There was a couple leaders sitting between the cops and the protesters saying, no, we have our message, we have the street, we have the permission. Yeah. This is how we do it. Sometimes leaders can come in and tell people and, and correct things in a small amount. And you know what? If your world comes true then we need this community already set. Otherwise, it's everybody fighting for something. If you have good leaders telling good messages and keeping control, you can have a mob, but one person can lead a mob away. Just like in Ferguson, when they, mm. let those motherfuckers burn. Set the, set the city on fire. It, it's and not. then the, the city went on fire just like 10 minutes after that. Good leaders can lead to good things. But one person cannot stop a mob. One person mm, cannot. Depends on takes. the person. MLK. I stopped a mob at the Trump rally. This dude was like bashing his head against the skate thing. And I was being the only chick there. So I had my pepper spray ready. And mm -hmm. I got this guy in a San Francisco Giants hat to help me. Because, you know, Giants fans are cool like that. Let me and, go to uh, something. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. It's like one person, you know, as small as that was. Because in Fresno, there was only one arrest made. And it was that guy. If I hadn't have done that, it could have gotten bigger. You I'm prevented one. But yeah. it's very yeah, hard to stop. Let me go to some more history. Yeah, I did. Uh, we've been friends for a very long time. Alan, there's one, there's one one I remember about us. We were outside of a Denny's, and you were in your Buddhist moment, and you had to convert everyone around you. And we had two drunk assholes that met us outside of a Denny's, and you were starting to preach the message of peace and love, and they were preaching the message of I want to punch you in the face. The yeah, bigger guy, today. the Lenny <laughs> guy, was wanting to, he, he said, I don't want to do this, but if my friend's going to get into it, I'm going to get into it. And there was four of us, two of them. And we kept talking them down, and you kept preaching your message every time that we had a walk away moment. And, Chris, and it if kept you happening. Go down a laundry list of the things no, that we've no, done in the past that we probably shouldn't have the, done today. I'm making can, a point can, here. No, I don't think you I'm are. making a point. If we take the time <laughs> to talk know, people down, why you're explaining the story? Why can't you I'm making the point? Understand? If you'd shut the fuck up, you'd hear it. I'm making the point that if we if we while. if we tucked up the ego, the attitude, whatever, and tried to work on something better, we can make better around us. It doesn't have to be the entire I country or the entire the world. Impression that I ever suggested the opposite. Well, okay, let me go. Hmm. Let me let me let me just throw something in here real quick, just to kind of again. My question: When we started talk, when I when I asked you the question about look, once it's already said and done, right? Mm -hmm. The ship is no longer sinking. The ship is no longer in danger. The ship is gone. Now people are floating in the ocean, right? Yeah. People are floating in the ocean. What we need to know, what we need to know is where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Yeah, if you and the thing a lifeboat. is is you need to educate people. Alan, I just met you tonight and we've had a several we've had several conversations. I think I think some things we agree on and some things we don't. But the one thing that I don't agree with on agree with you on is this fact that I mean Dowdy kind of pointed it out and you kind of agreed non-verbally that you've already checked out. What we need is people to stay checked into the game. No, if checked, that's not true, I've just say yes or no. Out of the cheated game. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I haven't checked out of life. What we aim to do on this show is to educate people yeah. to some small degree, correct? Ding. Absolutely. Now, if this is the point of the game, then what we want to do is we want to educate people and we want people to say checked in on some level. Because if we go and say, look, we can take every personal opinion we have about the world and throw it out there and expect that all of these little minute percentages of facts and no, figures you, are going to make it into there, all we're doing is we're skewing it even further and we're saying, playing Look, the same game we're okay. currently now, out when were, when were you under the impression that we were suggesting that? What did no. we say that? What, right, what I'm on. saying is, now, what I'm saying ben, is, hold on, hold on. More on I, know, I know Kevin wants to say something. Let me say, that. Alan, and this has been building 
all night. <laughs> No, I, I, I've been like actively texting and talking wait, to people. I can't wait for all you to tell Alan, me that I've been. <laughs> you have you have so much goddamn intelligence and knowledge about so many things, <laughs> and you are a passionate motherfucker. But you have this sense that you come and we talked about this in the break, and I walked away from you. You have this need to have to prove. Like I, I, I told Vanna. Side note: I told Vanna she's a hardcore Christian. If she were to sit in a room with a Muslim and have a discussion about two religions, there's there's two outcomes here. You can either have somebody no, I gotta converted. Got to wrap this shit no, up because I ain't gonna listen to this <laughs> for five minutes before I get. To thank speak you for again. proving me. No, uh, I've, I've been waiting. You for can a long either time you can either con- you convince people that your is right and it's that's the only outcome of your conversation, or you can actually converse and walk away happy. Mm-hmm. Alan, your thing is to talk to people. And tell them your thoughts, and then you shut down. If they have any rebuttal, it doesn't matter. You, you give them all the acts, uh, the the facts, the evidence. You're no better than liberal media in punishing people and telling them that they're doing it wrong, no, just, and you're only right, and that's it. What did I say that made you under this impression? See, and this is the game you play. What did I say? What no, did I I'm, do? I'm in the same I spot, know. too. Like, I want to know what the fuck I said that made you under that impression. You can't walk away from tonight. Feeling happy that that we did. This. I feel perfectly fine, man. You're the one that looks like you're getting a little crazy. All right, first of all, let's stop this. I want to address uh, Ben as far as Alan's checking out. Alan is not checked out. If Alan checked out, he wouldn't be sitting here explaining all this stuff. The so, second part is yes, we're here to educate people. The topic, the most important shit to know, is the stuff that's going to kill you. So in this case, the collapse of, of, of the economy, which is mathematically inevitable based on the statistics, based on the practice of fractional reserve banking. I know this shit is boring. My God, it is one <laughs> hell of a, of a horrible burden to bear this kind of information and to spend four or five hours a day on YouTube willingly looking at all this stuff instead of keeping up with the Kardashians, instead of fucking football, instead of fucking baseball and all this other bullshit distractions they shove down our face when you willingly look for this stuff you find it because it's there it's unfortunate that this is the truth and what you're saying is you know we're sitting here saying we have to be right no from what we've studied and researched this is the outcome and it's not just us saying this there are thousands hundreds tens of thousands of people that have done all this work for us be for us and they've all come to the same conclusion yes there's stuff talking about it on the on the other side how it's not right we've gone into that shit too we've debated with people about this stuff the the vast majority of people in the united states are dumb as fuck and the only thing they know is what they know through the television and guess what we've been debating and fighting the same goddamn talking points that get shoved through the television is the same shit that gets parroted from everybody that does zero research on this subject and if all of this no 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 Kevin. So it's infuriating. Kevin, you and I have gone back and forth on all this, yeah. right? The other night, uh, your brother was here. Mm-hmm. We got into this, like we would do on the kick. We got into this. I threw a chair. I was pissed. I, I lost yeah. my composure and all that. But during one of his speeches, you looked at me and you said... Tact. Yes. Yeah. Learning how to get your message across. Alan would love to get uh, just say his thing. Do and you think this you is something said, I don't know already? Yeah. I mean, do you think this is something you're that okay I might? with standing on a soapbox no. in front of an audience of none? And we're trying I, to. Get, I do want to mention that I've basically said nothing so far. <laughs> no, this basically. is we're talking about past the show no, too. I'm, no, I'm timing it. I mean, and anybody I listening have said nothing. But all right, I you know what? Talking. Fuck it. Then I keep fine. Waiting, man. I keep uh, waiting my turn. Let's Hold give on. Alan his soapbox. Go ahead, time. say your thing. I, no, it's all right. I'm, I'm waited, but you're, you're attacking me now because I'm just trying to mention to you that I'm waiting my, my turn. My life's away. Go for it. <laughs> I don't even remember <sighs> now, man. Go ahead. <laughs> You beg for it, and then you... Nope, I don't beg for anything. I'm just telling you what happened. All right, hold on, hold on. Let let me just say one thing really quickly. Look. I mean, who doesn't know that you need to have a good presentation. Everyone knows that. I know that already. I but know that don't. my presentation isn't that great, but I don't give a fuck when it comes to me trying to save the world. I'm just trying to make that clear. Like, I don't know why you're all hung up on this presentation thing with me. I don't give one flying fuck if it sounds good or not. That's how, and, that's how important it is, man. This is what's wrong with modern day America. People like you right now who just don't give a fuck about what the presentation is, you're going to live on your island alone. No, we and don't as have this time, country man. is crumbling, mm-hmm. when you could really use some soldiers backing you, 
You can get some people backing you. That's what I'm the trying to do. The hope of the kick. The hope of the Dirty Daddy podcast. The hope of Longbox. Yeah, yeah. To get some people backing you to follow your message because you have a good message. But you say it like a bull in a china shop and you just fire off and you say, fuck everyone. Know, I'm getting but that if you impression sugar from you. Your, if you sugarcoat your message and you get people uh, because it's been Have we ever and, sugarcoated that, completely... Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been I've been I've been ostracized for saying too much for too long. Yeah, but we've you know also I mean? talked about this like last week's show where you went on a forty five minute thing. You did much better Eight than minutes, the first the show way, we've done. Not, I made the joke forty five minutes, but that's a little bit of a stretch. It was no more than ten minutes. It, it's about and this, that's the point of the show is to encourage. Now, the first time that we had a break when what you were doing was when Vanna got heated. And she went off on you, and, and there was a moment, and it was like conversation happened, and yeah. you've been begging for Vanna to speak, and you fired at Vanna, and Vanna fired back, and I questioned some of the things Vanna said, and yet she's here again this week, and I want her here this week. Yeah. I want to hear the voice. Vanna represents our millennial. You're you're twenty four. Twenty five. Okay, sorry, you had a birthday. Um, I I, I want to hear her opinion. I want to respect it because I know I'm I'm get off my lawn guy. <laughs> but we, uh, you need to hear everyone's opinions. We all live in a goddamn village together. Yeah. Delivery matters. Kevin, you've been getting it better and better. Alan, you are just so hard Thanks up. Thanks for the lesson, man. I'm ready to talk about stuff. <laughs> if you want to take over the show, go for it, man. I mean, you, you already did it the first half. I'm just saying, if you're planning on sitting I'll, there and I'll, I'll, giving me this lecture for another 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this much, and this question is both for, for Ben and Dowdy. From what you've heard from Alan and I, do you do you believe any of it? What I want is solutions. I, look, personal just, opinions. Just, you can't just, talk about yes solutions no. until you address this point. This is important. Yeah, it's both it's both for you and Daddy. Both of you, yes or no answer. Well, fuck it. If the world comes to an end, the world comes to an end. Do you, 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 you stop? It's just it's a one word answer. How seriously. about let's do this? Hold on. Give Ben a yes or no. Let me answer the question. Ben, shut up. Let me answer the question. Give a yes or no, and then allow him to reason yes. why. Christ. Now we're down to formatting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, never mind. <laughs> Slipping a joke. Do I believe that the world is going to come to some sort of a crashing, screeching halt? Do you believe that the economic collapse is inevitable mathematically like we've been stating? However bad it ends up being. You know. Look, whether whether it affects a few or a lot, yes, I believe that it can be. Fi- I, I believe that it's feasible based okay. on the economic bubble back in what two thousand eight, eight years ago. We saw a very. It didn't affect as many people as you thought it might, and for some, it probably affected more than you know we thought was possible. Yeah, but a pretty good chunk. But it but it happened. It yeah. fucked a lot of people. So if something like that can happen, then yes. Now standing past that, and because I'm the kind of guy that I'm going to look at a problem, I'm not going to dwell on it for too long. I'm I'm going to look at a situation. Yeah. If it's a problem, I'm going to be I'm going to be one of the first people I know to find a fucking solution. So that's why I brought the question to you tonight. The ship's already at the bottom of the ocean, man. The Titanic has do? fucking sank, right? It's no longer an if or if and or when or whatever the fuck. Now it's what happens next. Okay. What do we do next? And let me expand on that just a little bit, just so you kind of understand my headspace here. Because what I look at right now is a lot of bitching and screaming about this, that, and the third about how the world is may be a fucked off place and how you know there could be this financial collapse that happens and you know whether it's mathematically inevitable or whether we just hope that it might happen in the, in, 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 in the hopes that you know shit we get to you know do another fucking Rodney King riot like we did back in 92 I mean people want to loot stores just for the sake of going out and stealing TVs people are like the first thing that I'm going to do when the world shit or the shit hits a fan no, I got is you. I'm going to go out there and loot right I got you I got you all I want is a fucking solution I want a starting point from the the end times. Okay. I want to way back to where we should be to, to move on. Here's okay. what I'll say. When that reset takes place and there is no more central structure, power, like actual electricity, water kind of stuff, you're back on your own, basically. The world does what it's always done. People will find a way to trade with each other, their skills, and all their little varying amounts of labor and, and, and what everybody's good at. They're going to find these things again. Um, so that's not going to change that that will continue because that's just what happens people have needs and other people will find a way to fulfill them what's important is that we don't set up another system that is predicated on the use of force 
if if I knew exactly what to do after all this happened, I would be a central planner and I would be a piece of shit. So I don't know exactly the steps we're supposed to take after it happens. I know that what we're doing now, everything that we do is funded through force. We as Americans are responsible for every single death, every bomb that's that falls, every single bolt that fires is is our liability. That's us. It doesn't happen because, you know, we're not free of it because somebody else is pulling the trigger. This is us. And every our entire society, the entire state, the entire government is all based on force. So that force will inevitably lead to exactly where we are now. It will continue to grow. It will suck the wealth, the wealth out of whatever nation it's in until it implodes and it starts over again. And this is just the, this is literally the battle between the good and evil that has been going on. This is all the warning and everything. This is you avoid the use of force as a vessel to provide morality in civilization. You have you have to be moral to begin with. And not initiate force, not institute, not institute, you know, organizations that use force to fund itself, to produce war and blah, 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 and so forth. We get back where we are. So short answer, I don't know what the hell happens afterwards. I know that as long as we don't enslave each other and we don't initiate force against each other, it doesn't matter what happens because it'll be moral. (laughs) It's not comforting. Do I get a chance to? (laughs) I actually would like to give Alan a chance because he is not. Uh, let me say one thing that I got. Okay. This is now in text. Um, what is your desired outcome? Are your current methods working to uh, meet the outcome? My desired outcome is independence. My current methods. But I don't hear anything about you making this current situation better. You just you're waiting it out. Well, I mean, I, I can only do so much right now, but the plan, of course, is to get it, up on our own It feels property. like you're in South Carolina, and hurricane season just happened, and you boarded up your windows, and you're just gonna. Your plan is to wait it out. You'll knock those what boards off when the time comes, and you'll try to survive at that point. We're waiting for options. Yeah, honestly, the only the only other option is to let everyone else around us know. That's so some that, pussy ass shit. Why don't you no, do something it's saying, now? Can I the do? most direct answer there. You have one. No, option there's now. preparedness, and there's just giving up well what could i do you can try like and you're doing it you're on the show we're doing the show right you can try to work with people you can try to make better can't that be an option instead of just waiting for shit to fall it's like the 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 old i don't know the goddamn book but the the guy with the axe in the stuck in the uh he's in the basement the axe is up on the roof and he's sitting there crying because he knows that Axe is going to fall one day and kill, possibly kill his kids or his wife or whatever, when he could just grab the axe and fix it. Now, that's a, a, not yeah, exactly here, but, well. <laughs> but there's a lot of talk about it's all going to fuck up. It's all going to fail. So yeah. we got to get our, our silver. We got to get our land. We got to protect ourselves. Yep. Is there any part of you guys... That wants to try to, like, how can we create a community now the ship before is sunk, it happens? Man. And if it happens, you already have a community set up. There, there, is no, there is no possibility of any wealth being generated anymore without the state. The Fuck current, wealth. No, no, no. You We're talking about people. Uh, the, well, okay, so we- wealth is basically what people accumulate. And for people to live, they need to accumulate stuff because they have to consume but to for live. clarification, really quickly, I didn't mean to cut you off, but, but just for clarification, you said that... Obviously, wealth wealth is an accumulation, right? But then mm-hmm. when the end times happen, right? End times, they lack of better terms, correct? Wealth okay. is resources. Okay, but when the end times happen and the world resets, I mean, there's no more wealth. I mean, fuck wealth. Sure, there's, just, oh, there's, oh, there, there's, there's wealth in silver because it's tradable. There's wealth in water because you can drink okay. it to survive. There's wealth in food. There's wealth in shelter, mm-hmm. power, batteries, blankets, first aid. There's wealth in all this stuff. People but want da- these Dowdy, things. back to, back Te- to your, your uh, point, though. Text, mex- uh, text messages put in. Yeah. Tex-Mex. Um, the government is not them. It's us. We the people. Duh. Now, I already know where you're going to go. <laughs> I'm just saying the first part. Yeah. Second part. If you truly believe that this is where, uh, that this is why and where we're going to go, why are you not holed up somewhere with supplies? I'm getting there. Like, not in my speech. I'm actually getting there within the next 12 or 13 months. I hope to God. This is the plan. This is why I'm telling everybody, get guns, get ammo, get food, get water. Because all these services are going to be cut off. And when they are, like, okay, so if, if 
I'm going to say if the collapse happens because I don't want to argue that point. So for the sake of argument, if the collapse happens, these services aren't going to exist. The water in your faucet will no longer come out of your faucet. We already the got super- gray water. Yeah, the supermarket's not going to have anything on its shelves. You're going to have to eat and drink water within three days or you're dead. Though that's that's what you're looking at. This is not new, man. This has happened before in other countries. I don't like why is it so weird to be saying this shit? It's only weird to people who have not done the research. It's it really not, is. but based okay. on history, okay. my question again, because again... I, you're, you're asking where does it go from there? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying... Sorry, how, but hold on, and, hold on. And you, no. and you said it, and no, you no. said it, though. You get your land, you do all this, so the country collapses. Yeah. You think you survive because you have that? I have a little better chance. I'm do not holding up Do you realize that there are, there are countries sitting around us? Yep. Frothing at the mouth? Sure. Waiting to come in? Yep. Do you think that... Uh, did you watch Red Dawn, Gray Dawn, whatever it was? Do you think that you're going to fight back as the Wolverines against the the Koreans, the Russians, the whoever? You're not. I should let people know that I have I have I have come to accept the fact that I'm probably going to die at the hands of my own government or at the hands of some other enemy combatant. Great, this, that's very ostrich in the sand. No. It why, sucks why don't to accept you figure that, out that. how to do better with what you got now? Because there's a rigged game, and there's no way changing the rigged game. So when people say the government's not them, it's us. Well, it might have started that way, but it's turned into them. And if you don't believe me, look at the NSA, the CIA, the, all I'm these I'm not going to knock organizations. you on this. You're no, no. right on this shit. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So when you say, what good does it do to get property and food and water and stuff? My God, it helps me live long enough while everyone else is killing themselves. I have two sides to this. This is the uh, the government. Like, If I go with you guys, it's all going to crash and fail. Mm-hmm. We all burn to death. I didn't say that. Well, I, yeah, well, I mean, we all uh, it fails and, and yeah. the one percent gets to go off on their island or they're happy with what they got. Uh, everything crashes and burns. We It's miserable. I don't think it gets there because it can't be allowed there. You need your slave labor to make your plantation work. Uh, If you want to do better and if you see that this is a world that's coming, then why don't you work with the slave labor, the people around you, and when shit crashes and burns, why don't you... And Alan, I've already pegged you as a David Koresh. I think that you want to have a Waco. Who's going to pay them? You pay... Well, okay. Okay. Longbox.fm. Has anyone in this room ever made a dime for doing what we do? Can you answer the question? But wait, no, no. We have a good system going. We understand that we're doing better. We're trying to do something with ourselves, whether the kick or the DDP or whatever. And there's an economy in that. I provide through trade. I have beer. I can get sushi roll platters brought in here. People get a chance to speak on a mic. There's a trade value, but you're working in an economy. Mm-hmm. I didn't go off on myself and set this whole station up and say, I'm going to be on a mic 24-7. Yay. Yeah. Fuck you, everyone else, because I'm under right. the impression we suggested the opposite? Yes. Dowdy, you're, you're suggesting that we work with others and vote to change the system, right? That's what you're saying? Why check out? Why not include ourselves and, and try to help? Either vote to change the system and then let it fail. Because I think that's where it goes. But you're active and you're working with people. You're making friends. You're making a community. You're making something. So then when the armed soldiers come in, you actually like Transformers shit. Uh, you, you get I, people I, just fighting and going against the mass or whatever. You get something because you people are loyal to you. But there's so many people who have... This is the way it's going to go. The world is going to fail. We're all miserable. We're all dead. And they stayed in their own goddamn RV in the middle of a field somewhere because they're off, quote unquote, off the grid. Uh, if you if you make a community, you build a community. When shit goes bad, you have a community backing you. Now, what do you, what do you, think do you realize do? that people who are in our position don't isolate themselves? We actively go out and try to inform more people. That's why we're both sitting here. So you're saying we're checking out. I'm saying no. We're trying to tell people, step the hell away from You're the- doing a better job Listen, of it, but Alan I'm, is not. We're trying to tell people, step the hell away from the obviously self-admitted corrupt system that everyone's saying, whoa, whoa the fucking machine doesn't work. I guess I'll keep putting my goddamn money into it. That's what people do every single time they vote. Shit has gotten worse every four fucking years. Can anybody say anything differently? Is, is, it, is it worse or better? It's fucking worse every single is time. Is it not bad to split the two? No. To, you to get be people able to, out of playing this fucking game, dude. This game is designed specifically you to keep sucking people in. You vote and you try. 
No. You vote and you try, but at the, the same time, is you rigged. build your tribe. Your system is rigged. Don't waste your time trying. You're well, wasting resources. Well, then you've given up on what You're has been the basis time. for no. our country for 250 Absolutely. years. The basis mm. of the country is independence. You are a sovereign individual. You make your own but rules. You, you succumb to nobody's authority. That is the basis of the country. It has absolutely nothing to do with succumbing to the fucking will of the state and choosing which of the two evils they're going to throw in front of you. If that's what you choose to do, they can throw the two worst fucking people on the planet on a platform in front of you and you're happy <laughs> and to vote for one. one. Because but you're changing. you should vote because speaking from someone who's actually been in the Fresno Unified School District, there are local things that do matter. So when you have that mentality, like I was telling you earlier, you know, what do you do from the time now to November? I mean, yeah, shit's going to happen regardless, you know, like the end of the world is near doomsday whatever no it's not just as rigged because i've seen shit change i've seen programs get saved because people actively getting out of their asses and voting so for you to say that is completely unrooted in any fact i'm not talking about changing the world i'm talking about changing your own fucking backyard which is what you actually have a little bit of control over the little corner that they give you to piss in that you have a little bit to control over they give to us you should actually do (laughs) what do you mean well i'm I'm talking they as in your they took it from us no, but no. either way, it's still something that we can do to fight for what we want for change. Every policy enacted by the state, any state, any size for those government of you guys listening, is done out of force. Sometimes you can't cheat, teach an old dog new tricks and it's okay. Sometimes yeah, you can't explain the principle of force and the use of force. <laughs> Everything the government does, every single thing is done with force. It has to be. This is how they fund themselves. Well, you know what? I'm a Star Wars fan and I believe in hope still. Call Excellent. Me stupid. It Excellent. Well, if you, if, you're, if you, know, you find your, your morality. being shoved down my throat. Right, right. it's, it's all good, dude. It's no better than the fluoride that's throat. in the tap water. Do you guys have any suggestions for avoiding the future? I the Spencer's right now. Him. Suggestions for... Avoiding the future. Avoiding the future, the future. you say. You, no, that's a ridiculous question. Do you, do you not see any other future <laughs> and no future? other possibility? And... Is the message uh, is the mes- message being delivered that uh, you guys should go out and save save everyone? Like you go out and just save yourselves. Sorry, I'm trying to interpret this. Uh, do you guys see any other future other than complete collapse? And do you see any other way to work it to try to find a better solution or a better final game? Answer the At first question. At least internally. I- internally. Answer the first question. Unfortunately, no. I don't see any other future except for a financial collapse. That is not something I like to say. It's not something that I enjoy telling people. I'm not trying to say, look at me, look at me, doom and gloom. I'm saying the research that I've done myself and the research mm. and a lot of other people that have done similar research and to people yourself, have done this before. Though. Well, who else is going to do research for me? Well, you have other people <laughs> that also do research on their own and have different opinions. Of course. You guys when have, you have in when the you world have a, opinion. When you have a massive amounts of people who have studied specifically to be able to do these things, like economists, ec- economists, for example, who come up with these solutions, people who have lived the life of you know banking and, and finance, who have said, hey, the writing is on the wall. So answer the first question. Unfortunately, yes, I do believe it's going to collapse. The second question is, what do you do? You get food, you get water, you get somehow to protect these things, and you sit down and you wait until this shit, until all the dust settles. Because it's going to take about six months to a year for all the people to kind of decide how they're going to live the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Those of them that survive, well, you just inherited the rest of the the earth. So now we get to start over. I'm not, again, this is not fun to say, man. I'm not like, oh, It feels like you've given up on everyone, though. No. If Look, I gave up, you wouldn't see me ever again. Here, I am I am wouldn't pushing. be talking to them. You yes. guys know that I am protective of my audience and what's going on, but I'm telling I hate I hate millennials. <laughs> I think I, I think in general the group is dumb. Sorry, Vanna. Um No <laughs> Vanna, come back. <laughs> I hate millennials in the way they are. And I also think I hate millenn- millennials in the same way that I hate anybody getting like get off my lawn type of thing. Every generation has to grow. It took me to 36 before I finally got the moment to go like, okay, politics, I'm interested yeah. because I got fucked over by something. I had some weird things happening and I got involved. If you're in a spot where you can educate people without pounding it down their throat, mm-hmm. without punching them in the face with it, where you can motivate people and start building a community mm-hmm. like we've built on this station 
Yeah. We have a lot of people to listen now. Yeah. And this has been seven years of slowly building a community. Yeah. Through butt jokes, dick jokes on the DDP. Yeah, I got and, you. And, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Don't you keep doing that? Or do you... What I'm hearing from you guys is kind of like everything's fucked up. Fuck it. Number one, we're seven... I'm going to tell you what it is, and if you don't hear it, fuck you. I will win because I got my no, spot. Listen. And Alan's just, he's either got to piss or or he's dying to say something. All right. We are seven years late on the kick. It is too fucking late to spend any more time trying to amass an audience getting ready to tickle their balls enough to listen to this really fucked up message that we have been fucked. We have been systematically fucked. We have been stolen from from the government. That is a goddamn fact. Anybody who wants to take the time to willingly lift the veil and research this shit themselves will find that shit out. If you constantly find ways not to believe somebody who's ringing a goddamn warning bell... That is your fucking fault. I'm not checking out by not voting. I am screaming at the top of my lungs. Stop fucking voting. The game is rigged. You've admitted it's rigged. It, you can't fix this shit through voting. But if you want to survive, takes, like, shut so up. Time. Sorry. No, but it's no, like voting, like, voting is even if you useless. That, voting like, is like, an act of like violence. We've been who, through before, this. Who, but those people who aren't even religious, but just in case God is religious, they take that ten they're seconds ready, to like pray before they're, it's over. Oh no! Hold like, on! Hold on! No, no, no! No! Hold on! Hold on! It takes so little fucking time to. I need to. I need to address one. Alan, you I just said one statement. You, until I get an apology, so you, you said one it. statement right there. No, I ain't That's a to big you. insult to anyone. I ain't fucking talking to you until I get I, an apology. I've, well, it's okay. You cannot. You just said no, they're man. not ready. You're acting like a child, man. And you when you act, when you talk about jumping around like a bull in a, in a you know in a china store, and you're the one who's jumping down my throat, you've told me to shut the fuck up. You've all you're doing, man, is jumping on me. I've been literally sitting here waiting. I'm the only person in this room writing down notes professionally, trying to communicate know, in a systematic way. No, listen to this. I'm the only person sitting here right now writing down notes of bullet points that I've been waiting to talk about. If you want me to address all these things that you guys have been talking about, it's going to take four hours now because that's how long I waited professionally and patiently. I have to back it up on that. Yeah, but he took the first hour of the show no, to, to get oh, on his goddamn well, soapbox. I, I guarantee you, I'm going back and watching this one, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually find out. <laughs> I'm gonna, I guarantee you. Daddy, it comes down to this. Apology. When he says they're not ready, it, 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 it really, people are It's an insult. Not. It is. It is, but it's, not an insult. it's the truth. What it, 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 it honestly comes down to people are not willing to look at uncomfortable truths. Which is the government does not have your best interest and in your mind. You're in asking to us me. to come back into the voting machine. I'm telling you, you've admitted it's you've admitted it's rigged. Vanna's saying it's important to vote. Voting is an act of violence. Everything that the government does, even the vote, means that you're going to hey, vote hey, for hey, somebody. I support violence. I like video games. That Excellent. Are violent. You should definitely not be in charge. <laughs> These, okay, that's a I that's know, called I'm a sorry. joke. We're trying to have discussion. True. We're trying to make I didn't it. I did not realize okay, it was turning into a video game reference. Stop. You can settle down. <laughs> this is where I'm going with. Um Alan. Go ahead, man. I we can't already this. had this. I can't wait for me to wait another five minutes for you to fucking jump down we my already had this and argument. try to tell me how we, shitty I am. I haven't done shit. All I've done is come in here and try to tell you guys what happened. I haven't insulted anybody. I haven't told you. No, I know you're smarter than everyone. No, I have not. You when, got it. No, when when were you under that impression? Tell me right now. When were you under that impression that I was suggesting that? Do you know what you are right now? Yeah, you won't answer the question. Black Lives Matter. This is what yeah. it's gonna be. Yeah. White men. That's what are we call failures. projection. You gotta step in the No, you That's do that. You do that man. screaming, <laughs> you do that yelling. You're doing it right now, man. You're yelling at me. <laughs> Look at you, man. You're yeah, a bull in a that's what you do. Store. You you're smart, man. You're smart, and I give you credit for this. Yeah, I mean, this but you know to how to rile up man. a crowd. This has to do with your behavior. This has nothing to do with my intellect. This all right. Well, you. then. You all know right. What? Listen. Listen. Let's let Spencer's close off the show. I'm going to end this right here. Both Ben and you have asked, "Where do we go from here? Why we won't join in the vote and everything else?" And I've explained multiple times now, and everyone's admitted again. The the, the whole voting system is rigged. That's not that's not a lie. That's the truth that that people are very apparent with. I'm not going back into that system to try to pull people out. I've recognized the corruption in it. It is time to pull people out of that system, the 9% of the people that are left, and say, hey, I've got a way that we can be independent. This is the better way. I can't force people into my way of life. I can't vote. 
You do but not. Why not no, both? Listen, like because I was it's saying, impossible. Like why can't you vote? Because it's an oxymoron. Oh because shit. you can't vote. That's not vote. true. Because I actually Vanna, have an oh shit. Like Vanna, what if I'm a Dale Gribble in a sense, but we at the same close. time Vanna, I still believe in voting. You cannot vote. I've got to talk like less than five minutes, dude. It's like true. come I'm on. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just honestly asking, like why not both? Voting takes so little fucking time. Why not prep for everything? Why not be smart, Kevin? Why not? If you actually care about these people, why not tell them? Look, if you want to have your cake and eat it too, why not vote? Just make sure you've got like water and beef jerky for what did you say? Three days and you're dead or whatever. I don't know. Give the people a fucking chance. The, Before, I'm, I'm desperately trying to ring a warning bell and tell people that if they continue to vote, so with you're your sliding, warning bell, why don't you suggest fruits? Why don't you suggest websites? Why don't you suggest w- ways to enact your plan? Okay, let me let me address all this real quick. Um, voting is an act of violence because everything the government does. Who gives is a done shit if it's force. violent or not? No, no, because let, let, the principle let, is do not I initiate do. force. This is the principle behind liberty. Nobody gets to choose who they get to fucking be the authority over. So then, in a you sense, if they do it or not, is it violent? Shit. If there is no action, if, if 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 you vote for a tree to fall and you don't hear it falling, does it even vote at all? That makes absolutely no sense. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Is that that's what no, that sounds that, that's like? That's a useless uh, goddamn to say, argument. No, to say that voting is an act of violence, but yet to say that the vote doesn't matter at do all. You can the, the use of force against matter? other people. You know what, listeners? I'd like to imagine that you you go understand what I'm. Vanna, saying. I'm going to nail you to the wall on this one. Do you condone? You're not going to nail me to anything. Do you condone the dude. for the use of force against others? I actually do. Why? Why? For what reasons? For what reasons? Because I was in a domestic violent relationship, and if I didn't, I would have died. So, do you, so you that's you, not initiating you, force. Yeah. Do you can do you okay. no, 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 with everything that's no, with everything that's happened, I did not critical. pick on her. No, the, no, she's I, fucking. She was in the middle of my goddamn I know, speech. And Vanna, I'm sorry. Stop. I've been listening this whole time, and I'm sorry if I felt like that. Actually, there was a moment for conversation, closing, which has been so little. I remember that absolutely. Do you condone initiating force against somebody? I just answered that already. So you do. Yes. Before, be, not in self-defense, initiating aggression against somebody else. Do you I believe condone in this. that? No, I don't. Okay, then how can you condone voting when voting is the... Is be, and this, I told you why, because saying. I think that that's a stupid Jesus statement Christ. that doesn't make any sense. Can I sense break down this voting? logic to you before you interrupt me? Let, can let, I get through one sentence before no, you interrupt man. me? This is not Please. what I want on this show. Please. Because the government is the monopolization of the use of force, which you've agreed to, anything, any decree that the vote makes has to be used ha- has to use the force of the state to initiate that enforcement i understand so that this part. is the initiation of force against others to produce the outcome of the vote dude and don't you understand that i understand that part i'm talking about people who are voting you're over here you spend, voting you spend hours is let a me violent finish talking act. i let you give your sentence let's have an actual conversation no, I just, you just agreed why no, voting is I a violent act i told you act. that me personally that wasn't what i was saying is i asked you you're telling people not to vote because it's yeah. an act of violence but you spent the whole entire fucking show telling people that their vote doesn't matter so if violence that's why i was saying is that the whole tree thing does it all make sense now that's what i was referring to if you actually listen to what i was saying you would gather that i was saying is how how can you tell these people that they're committing acts of violence when you just spent the whole hour telling them that that fucking act of violence that they're committing didn't even happen and had nothing to do with anything because they're not in charge of anything like you were every, saying every vote that is casted but is what a, about the people who cast vote for, for violence and my whole argument was for me personally was that for local things that go on locally you can make a difference in that little small can of corner of your little piss hole you can actually make a small difference if it's through the that's state, what i'm talking about it's still violence and I'm not talking about violence being an issue. You keep going back to that. No, it you is. You know what, dude? There's no getting the through. The state it's exists good, on dude. violence. It is all good. No, the, the so state glad that people itself. passed Prop 215 so I could deal with people like this. <laughs> What's the call when they attack the person but not the statement? Ad hominem. Ad hominem. I yeah. don't know. Anyways, this is Vanna yeah. Vandal. You guys can find me tomorrow night at the San Jose Improv doing fucking things, doing fucking stuff, going places. Uh, so tomorrow night, San Jose Improv. Vanna Vandal will be there. Uh, I'm out signing out for uh, the kids. Good talk. How's it going, Ben? (laughs) Whew. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to end it. Why not? Thank you, everybody, for joining. Those of you that that are left. That was fun. Hopefully you've listened to the warning bell. Hopefully the message got out. Who knows? After listening to this, I I will throw in just one or two things. Um, Alan. Alan, real quick, stick around. Uh, All right. All right. Just finish it off. All right, I'll say this. There are people, and this is what I wanted your brother to hear, there are people that are ready for this, but what I'm looking for is solutions after the fact. 
if the world does collapse, I want solutions after the fact. Yeah. Now, I still am in the belief that we can do enough good to prepare to prepare, or maybe even prevent some small part of this from really effect- affecting us the way that everybody's predicting and yourself as being one of those people included. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's still a community, a small group of community of people who can really lessen the impact of what, what's really going to happen. But when that inevitable crash comes down, I really want solutions after the fact. So there are some people that are fucking ready, man. There are some people that are yeah. ready. I'm one of them. Absolutely. I'm fucking ready for when it comes down around us. But again, I'm with Chris in the sense that what we do on the smallest scale will have some sort of a ripple effect if we keep at it, man. You said yourself that we're seven years too late for the kick. I don't think that trying to educate people is ever too late, man. Of I don't course really, not. Okay. I'm just so, saying we're too, so, we're too so late to sugarcoat it. So the statement that we're... No, 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 we're not because you're not sugarcoating it. Exactly. I'm not sugarcoating but he, it. he's saying we need to. No, no, no. Chris is not saying that we need to soften our message all. to gain more people. No. Well, this is another show that... No, I'm not saying soften. I'm saying delivery. No, no. How you put it out. Be political is what you're saying. No, be smart. When you would tell people that they're... When you attack people and their thoughts and the ways they do... Oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> we brought the wrath of mamas. <laughs> Mama Dowdy just came just in fine. strong. I'm doing just fine. No, we're finishing this off. We're finishing this off. I don't need um, Next week, we got another one of these, right? <laughs> I, think we, I think we need to go part two. Hell yeah. I'm down. Yeah, okay. You have no idea. Oh, definitely. Part three, part fucking 480. But can we, can we, we, can can we, can we agree? Can we agree? And we'll talk about this more a little bit after the show and going into the next week. Let's do, let's do part two of this. But let's actually start talking about fucking solutions, man. Okay, you know, otherwise, we get nowhere. Okay. Well, Hold I was on. trying. You, you know this is, <laughs> you know this is real radio when... The mom shows up and tells you to stop the show. Everybody yeah. go home. Everyone's screaming at um, each other. This is what we're doing. <laughs> Next week, the kicks live Monday night. Long box out of fam. Bring it, man. Wednesday night, we got Amaret coming on uh, Dirt Daddy podcast, which will be fun because we're going to be talking about dicks and butts or something like that. We're we're going to enjoy ourselves. Good breather. Uh, but for now, uh, I hope we woke you up. <laughs> Oh man, if this didn't, you're you're you were clinically next dead. <laughs> All right, we're out for tonight. Peace. I think that's I think that's what I wanted it to be. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. But I leave the stand up call. Yeah. Can we get a picture? <laughs> Did my mom just leave? I think that was real. I don't. I don't need a picture. Hey, mom, how are you? Hi. Oh my gosh, good to see you. Okay. I think. I give my baby a hug. I tried. I tried really, really hard. It's a brick wall.